Ba -ba 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 -ba. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Drock Show. Hello, everybody. Hey, do we do so you want to start introducing ourselves? Like, you mentioned Introduce? that. Should we? Hi, yeah, I'm Drock. It's really. Hi, I'm Mama Drock. <laughs> <laughs> nice to have you. Welcome. Welcome aboard. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. There was a thing I want to do. What, you, what was the thing you wanted to do? Happy <laughs> Someone got jump scared. Merry Christmas. Happy Merry Kwanzaa. Christmas. Oh, shit. My dog's been locked out. I need to go get him to give him a treat. Don't worry. I'll be right back. I just need to. Wait, he's not locked out. He was just hiding from me. My Maybe mic he doesn't want to be a part of the festival. My mic just made an awful guitar noise. You know what it is? It's also my treats are. I need to go get my treats. I'll be right back. I found new. I found new holidays. Hey, Mama, what do you think about the fact that nothing happened in this arc? I love it. It's so peaceful. I love it when nothing happens at all. Whoa, General. Great General King. That is a <gasps> Thank you for the subs, of... Great General King. That's amazing. You're amazing. We also had somebody up ahead who subbed for three months, and then we had somebody Good on here to find them. Okay, you but sit down, said, baby. There it is. You sit down, Exulting baby. Champion. Someone did it's push ups? All right, fuck. Time. I'll be right back. Get on the ground. I have no video. Why do I have no video? One, two, three, do, do, four, do, 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 do. five. Okay. Drock has to put the thing up so we can actually see the Drock, which it's boring. Look, he's not even there. Okay. Okay, we've done it. Uh, yes. Um, <laughs> this video is unavailable, which is great. But where are you? Where are you, Drock? Where am I? I was doing push-ups. I was getting dog treats and doing push-ups. Criteria has been met. Somebody else just subscribed for three months. Somebody else just did a tier one scrub. Subscribe. Someone I'm subscri too quiet. Yeah. I told you I was too quiet. You should allow me. I'm going to bump you. Dip, dip, dip. Okay. How is she now? I'm going to quiet hey, myself. Everybody. We've lauded her. These look level, guys. Am I louder? Am I? Yeah, these, these look level. No, I'm absolutely not ready for the bone jokes. I'm absolutely so not. many jokes. So do, do we want to hop into it? I want you to get on the page. I don't see you. Is it just me? What? Why don't I see you? I'm I'm right. What do you what do you chat chat? I exist, right? <laughs> <laughs> chat chat. Is it she says losing you it? Don't exist. Yeah, people see Everyone me. Everyone else sees you. Yeah, Everyone you gotta refresh. You. I'm gonna refresh, my dude. Just a minute. Do do okay. do 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 do. <gasps> oh, Is it you um, with doing the thing? Yeah, probably. So I'm I have a so question. No. Are we wanting to hop in? Or we wanted uh, to get started. I just started. want to say all the different things. Happy Yule. Merry Christmas. Happy Yule. Merry Christmas. Happy Kwanzaa. Is it just happy uh, for that one? Do they have a different adjective? I don't know. So if you are Hanukkah's happy, are they, Kwanzaa. Uh, uh, yeah. Kwanzaa people, are you just like chomping Kwanzaa's bit with the happy there? Yeah, we don't know. Um, don't Hanukkah, forget. But, yeah. uh, I don't know if this. So I'm going to go um, Blessed Zarathos Diso. Okay. Wow. <laughs> uh, stellar Solstice, everybody. That was yesterday, though. Stellar we'll Solstice. Actually, the world. fuck you. Yule. If you celebrate the Solstice, that's two days ago. You're done. You're out. Bye. <laughs> no, it's Yule. And I allow them to con continue with the Yule. Best Yules to you. Yeah, I mean, Yule I don't up. know. All I'm saying is Solstice is done and oh, over. Tomorrow's Chopper's birthday? Aw, I know that Santa got me a baby chopper. Santa I got you a baby I... chopper? <laughs> yeah? San Santa, I the am, spirit of Santa overtook Santa. your body, yeah. <laughs> the spirit of Santa overtook me, and now I have a baby chopper. That... Oh, Japan celebrates baby chopper's birth. Yay! So are we, are we said, ready? Um, peace. I, I couldn't be more ready. I don't know if you know. Yeah, I mean. This is so, a freaking long ass arc. It, so I have a question, though, because it's so long. Why are we doing this? Like, why are we? Why are we? Why are we doing this? Why are we talking about an arc where nothing happened? You know what? That's a good point. Maybe we should all just uh, do the Marys and then peace out. <laughs> 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 I mean, nothing happened. So mm. why are we even here? Why are we? Why are he, we he, draws, 
<laughs> he draws the things that I that I find most interesting, and I found it most interesting this time uh, that nothing happened. <laughs> nothing happened. <laughs> that was really, really interesting to me. I was like, oh, that's too bad. I was really weird, hoping weird, for something. <laughs> weird that you requested that draw a scene where nothing happens. Yeah, you were <laughs> like, what do you want? And I was like, nothing. <laughs> I'm here complete. for it, though. <laughs> this dream complete and seen. Yeah, you and me were talking about how we can't lean into the bit with um with Soga King without ignoring character development and ruining what you can talk about and making the analysis weaker. The nothing happened bit is just great. It's really easy to have fun playing into that. You can lean hard into that. <laughs> so hard. Um, I'm completely here. I said to a kid in my class, who, one of the ones who originally knew right away, he's read everything. And I said to him, uh, he goes, where are you at now, by the way? And I was like, oh, I'm in Thriller. Like, oh, it's a real letdown, eh? What with nothing happening? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, it's the first time I've got to be live with real One Piece community. I almost cried. I was like, <laughs> yes, I get that. I get that. <laughs> You've made it. You've made it so far. <laughs> High five. He's this is very happy for me. This is such a good arc in that if you want every straw hat to have a shining moment, everybody does cool things this arc. You know what else is great about this arc? Um, people who are big Zoro fanboys who stand for Zoro um, are all like, Mama Draw, Kate, Zoro. And I'm like, don't be an asshat. Mm hmm shit together i love zoro and in this one i get to be like zoro Z yeah. you get to hype up zoro so much look look i don't <laughs> feel bad about uh about hyping up sanji in the sea train zoro gets his fucking moment here he he gets his time in the sun yes he massively does yeah i could see that does ask machine i could see that actually yeah but i think that you can't you can't look in this arc and not think to yourself dude is everything that is honor like he's just honoring it up he wakes up in the morning has a bowl <sighs> he has honor for lunch he takes it for dinner takes a nap and wakes up with honor he is honor so, someone just gifted 10 tier one subs by the way so i want to God shout dang. out thank leo man 12 before we get going i was busy looking up at the moon at the time it's sunny by the way <laughs> that's amazing <laughs> thank you so much Oh man! Robin gets wings. What did Robin what do you mean, does? Robin, gets Robin briefly got wings this arc to fly when Robin and Frankie right. were about to fall. All oh, those were so cool. Where she just used different I'm... body parts in a combination to make wings. Yeah, I'm. I'm not gonna lie. This arc rocked. I had to quit reading it in color, which has been the opposite for me lately because I was just like, ugh, the color is so wrong for this. This is film noir i want it dark I feel, so i film noir like style inking but it it's it's got yeah, such no, a victorian horror inking. vibe yeah oh it yeah really, yeah like the film noir style ink and i that's what i was looking for mm -hmm. so i was like i guess um, not film then like noir comics yeah what yeah. are you doing here you're noir doing style. an interesting way of nothing happening <laughs> are you doing the one we talked about when we talked yeah. about the thing Where, yeah like, it feels like this is how it w could have been done in a comic, if not for the need to accommodate for time where. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so this is, I've done a lot of studying on how you do comics. And one of the things people don't think about is that control over time is finickier in comics than any other medium, because uh, yeah. you can't explicitly state time as easily as you can in a book, but you also don't have the gift of time being naturally incorporated as an animation. Uh, so a comic artist needs to think about time really substantially and uh oh. this is the type of shot that is really hard to make happen in a comic uh because time is a consideration illustration gets to represent a collage of time if it wants which is why we get to do this very easily in this format mm. love that thank you for te teaching us about comic build i personally am not going to make one but i still mm -hmm. like knowing things all knowledge well, if, is if worth anyone having. wants to learn about comics um i can talk shop about a lot of the base mechanics uh, and what I can tell you is they're very hard. 
Uh, people want to know if your opinion on Brooke changed because there was a lot of talk in you the community what? about your hatred of Brooke. I think, but... I think that my about Brooke are best described in a song. Uh huh. I'm not going to sing it though. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was talking to a kid. I was just telling Drock about this because um I was talking to a kid a couple of days ago about about Brooke. And I said, people are kind of having this whole thing where they're trying to say, oh, Brooke doesn't really know what he's talking about, blah, blah, blah. And the kid was like, no, he's an absolute pervert. I really like the guy, but I'm not going to pretend he's not a pervert. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, hey, that's all I want to hear. <laughs> Give Bellamy a treat. <gasps> my boy, my boy gets a treat. He's going to scramble his way across the apartment because he heard the sound. Oh, my boy. Oh, my boy. There you go. What a good baby. Oh, I have watched baby. so many Pet Binks brew. And I taught a kid who changed their name a, a few years back or a ways back. And they changed their name to Binks. And now I want to go back and say to them, like, is, is this... Is that why you called yourself Binks? And now I'm obsessed and I don't know where they are. So I'm sad. Okay, hey, how is my volume now? How's your volume? Volume seems fine to me. People said I'm, that my audio is dropping. I'm looking at Are the levels here. Are people having trouble with looks, my audio? Uh, you've dropped a couple times, but I think overall it, it feels solid. Hmm. It, every once in a while your mic drops audio. Oh, but it's their Wi-Fi. Okay. Uh, okay. Let me, how what? do I feel about Sanji now? <sighs> yeah, we'll get into all of this, guys. <laughs> but how we feel about Sanji lot, this arc. It's a lot to look, unpack. Let me look, just say, Sanji, kind of a bad kid. If the um, rivalry between Sanji and Zoro is unavoidable, I have to say, Zoro fans eat good in the arc where Sanji fans eat worst. I would agree. Like this Thank arc, you, def definitely is points towards the Zoro side of the rivalry. <laughs> yeah. Now the whole he's been on a ship with no woman. I want to look at their panties. Nah, nah, no excuses for him. He's he's a pervert. Um, owning the perversion is what makes it tolerable. Look, I I'll say I still think there's a room for argument that his social decorum is worse than it should be, but it, he still is doing it. <laughs> this arc is so hilarious. No, you are 100. percent this... I'm a fan. I think this is such a good arc for comedy. Should we just start getting into the story and reach those jokes as we get to them? Uh, yeah. Are you talking about actually doing the thing? Yeah, doing the thing. Yeah, I've heard about it. I don't know where we begin because I don't know how that oh, works anymore. Oh, I actually the canvas. Whoops. <laughs> uh, what well, we begin with um, the crew wandering through the mists, having a good time, sailing around when all yeah, of a I don't sudden, know what chapter that is. Ghost boat. Uh, well, what about, what about it's like not, four like, something? I was gonna say like forty six, but I was realizing that's a volume. That's a volume, not a chapter. What a great question! What a great question it is. Where we start, but it is drifting around the ocean in a boat, and then there's another boat, and we hear a laugh. <laughs> I have to get things? to the right page. The entire arc is amazingly funny. Also, Usopp is a star physical point. Some great comedic moments in this arc. Okay, does anyone know where we started this time? So because I don't know. If you... I think. No, my God, no, man. That's no really. What we started in four eighty nine? What chapter well, that can't am I be on? Right. Now? That's the end. That has to be the end. No, you're a crazy balloon. That's that's the end, right? Four sixty one. Someone oh. says. What? Four forty two. Where the fuck? Four forty two. We've had so many answers, guys. Four forty two. We've had so many different answers from chat. Okay, four eighty nine ends it. Okay. Oh, you know what? It is 442 because I just saw Brooks old, Brooks old tall ass body on this page when I went there. So we're good there. I have so much to complain about power scaling as one piece is none of the credentials or experience to explain it. Interesting. Look, yeah. look, let me tell you, someone with good media analysis skills, both sides of the argument are dumb. People who say power scaling in one piece doesn't matter are objectively wrong. Power scaling is an important part of the series. How strong people are matters. What they're physically capable of matters. It's a huge component. Uh, it's like the, a, a linchpin of thematic work. Uh, and I'll get into exactly how significant that is when we can. 
However, I will say people who the way people power scale tends to be insane. It tends to be criminally insane and entirely ignore that this is a story um, and that character growth is a part of it. Like, and that, yeah, power matchups matter. Luck can matter. Like there's, the argument is somewhere in between. It's not, you should exactly power scale and have all these tiers of power, but it's not power scaling doesn't matter because I think that's really untrue for how the story is written. Like Zoro's mission in life is literally to become the world's strongest swordsman. And I don't think you can have that in a story without power scaling. Like, I think that's genuinely incompatible. Look, you yeah, can call me centrist, say that. but in this case, I'm fucking right. I'll be a centrist when it's correct. <laughs> I was also going to say there's nothing wrong with being a centrist. I think we have a little too much far right and left right now, but I was going to say that one of the things is, is you can't claim that power scaling is an importance because how else would Zoro ever... And you mm. actually have to have something to be compared against. And we, we also have people like, well, there's that minor character. I think his name is Mihawk. Um, and so <laughs> when we're... Yeah. I can't remember for sure, but I think it was like Mihawk Hawkeye and he's like the to the earth. Um, mm -hmm. And you can't have somebody like that come in early to show you how ridiculously overpowered unless oh, there's your a audio drop there. power scaling. Oh, it did it? Yeah, just for like a couple words. Can you hear? Can you hear me now? Yes. Do I exist? Yeah, I don't know what to tell you. Things are weird. So you can mm -hmm. showing you how important the world of scaling up and power is by bringing out somebody with that much strength early on, unless power matters and unless scaling mm -hmm. matters. Oh my god! And they so do it right away to let us to let us know. Someone just did the fucking funniest comment. I was about to throw hands because I was I was genuinely a little upset at that this commenter. By the way, earlier chatter, I wasn't saying you were saying all power scaling's dumb. I felt like it was a community take. Just so you know. Um, I just yeah. do know people who are like all power scaling is bad. Like we should, their power scaling doesn't matter at all. I don't know. And I don't think yeah. that's accurate, but the comment started off by saying, I honestly hate what they do with Usopp in this arc. And I was going to be like, this is my, f one of my favorite Usopp moments in the entire series. I think this is my second favorite in the entire series for Usopp. Um, and then they go on to say, he's going to have this big moment. And then sniper King comes in and steals the spotlight from him. <laughs> <laughs> that's such a good bit actually <laughs> never the mind that's a, that's a great bit yeah second my first my first one is on um how to say this where there's no spoilers at all there isn't a way there is no to way to say my, it you want me to take off my earphones shut down my mic and return it on and then i'll come back on yeah here. i guess we can i guess can we can people? no no we'll just leave it we'll leave it if people you might know what it is, but it's not worth getting into. Hello, Kelandri. Keladri? Spain. Spain's a good way to say it. My set, my favorite is in Spain. Are you still there? No. What? Yeah, I'm not here. <laughs> That's the most confusing answer I could have from that question. <laughs> Okay, let's see if this mic works better. Oh, this All right, are we nice. ready to rock? Did you put the cat on it? Uh-oh. Uh-oh, she's gone. Sound a nice... She's gone! Well, hi, everybody. I guess um, we're here together. No, you're not. <laughs> what keeps happening? <laughs> Guys, I'm confused. Uh, okay, so they meet Brooke. We we need to get into it. They meet Brooke. Okay, so just before we do anything, like we're just Damn getting it, I have to into do our second... Never mind, we can't get into it. <laughs> my boy, my boy. You bratty kids. Now we're going to get into it. But first, push-ups. You should have pushed them up while I was switching mics out. I decided to go over to my other mic. Four. Uh, wait, my boy. Oh, all right, we're back. We're back. Okay. 
the time running on this thing is weird. We're at 10,000, like 10 million, 4,580. What? We're going backwards on what? my thing. Ign ignore it. I... Okay. So this was really interesting for me because we're getting to know the mayor. We're, we're getting to know the Sunny and we hadn't spent that much time with her. Mm. As soon as I saw the fish tank, I thought to myself, you have to pet the boy. Um, I've <laughs> met the kids. I think our crew is going to put a shark in there and it's going to eat everything. And sure enough, that occurred. So we knew it would. I'm glad it did. I was not disappointed. Um, we have talked about nothing, Ginger, Ginger Nicks. We have talked about <laughs> we, nothing. We've mostly just fucked around so far. Ginger, nothing has happened. Nothing will happen. <laughs> and that's the nature <laughs> of Thriller Bark. <laughs> okay. And then they get the barrel, and I was like, oh, God, no, not the barrel. Everybody knows that this the barrel is in tons of narratives. Don't open the damn barrel. They did, which I knew they also would, but I was like, oh, kids these days. Um, But then, just as I was getting to know our ship and how we come out to a brand new ship, get sucked away into a storm, and find ourselves with, how do you do Brooks laugh? Yo, wait, wait, <clears throat> let me get it. Yo, no, that wasn't right. We'll get there. I'll figure it out. Yo, no, no, I can't do it. We'll get, we'll get there. Yeah, <laughs> but that was not. <laughs> Yo, and he's singing Brink Binks Brew when we meet him, by the way, which is super, super cool. Um, and then as soon as we saw him, because we had a thing earlier one of our um regulars one of our our awesome people in the team was like mama would you like it if we had i saw you are um, actually cutting out more than normal you just yeah it was um but it was asking if you would like us to have a uh, crewmate with an afro after we saw afro luffy yeah and so we saw the afro and i was like oh no we're gonna have this weirdo as a crew member no, no, I was so sad because I didn't know him at all. Um, he was just the weird skeleton. I'm like, no, we're going to have a skeleton as a crew member? You know Is what's this funny? a skeleton crew? Get it? Bone joke. But up, anyway. but up, skull joke. <laughs> uh, something funny. I actually also got spoiled on Brooke joining the crew because of promo art that I saw. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Uh, mm. Frankie and Brooke were the only crewmates I had spoiled for me. <gasps> it's interesting, so though. I'm bits, okay though. that I had him. Oh, what's that about? Uh, bits. They're, they're, they're little donations. It's very nice. Those are really adorable looking, and they're spinning around, so they kind of seem like, I don't know. Yeah, little mm. bits. Culty. I like it. They seem culty? <laughs> <laughs> That's not what I expected feels, you to say. Feels a little Freemasony. <laughs> what? Yeah, look at the spinning triangle. <laughs> no pyramid. I'm oh. not alone in that having just taken you. Like anyone else just feel like they got T-boned by the last word of that statement? <laughs> <laughs> Conspiracy bits. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah. No, let's keep. <laughs> <laughs> okay so then oh yeah, my phone look at that right that oh. also feels a little culty <laughs> okay <laughs> you know what don't at me look at it it is <laughs> cult of cheer here we go a cult uh -huh. feeling okay so then um as soon as as soon as we met him, Brooke, the gentleman skeleton, I was like, yeah, he's going to be in our crew. I wonder how it's going to happen. Da, 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 da. So I thought that I was going to wait the entire arc. And then at the end of the arc, he was going to join. And instead we walk up and I could not have been more relieved because I knew I wasn't going to have to hang out. Never mind all that. Do you want to join my crew? I'd love to. It's like, this is so Luffy. And just before he does that, we do a close up on Luffy's face with his scar. And I was like, yeah. Good reminder. Thank you, Oda. <laughs> and so we get to find out that Luffy is maybe a little um, 
click on the draw. I also just, love that very recently you were talking about how Luffy's selective with his crewmates and only picks someone he has this strong uh, uh, sense of Ikiga from. And then right after Luffy's like, funny skeleton, you want in? No, I stick by that. Yeah, you think I he had a sense think, for him, but it is very fun. I think that Luffy has an immediate sense and it's like a calling, like he can feel the right people immediately. So if he runs into them, he doesn't waste time. Like every single time that Luffy um, comes across somebody who's meant to be a member of the crew, it's instant. He's just like, you are what, going to be a crew member. What this tells me is the weird old man face tree must have had intense Ikiga and we're just never going to know what his ambition was. Mm. I love this. We don't know what that yeah. tree's deal was. Yeah, the tree and unicorn had something going on that we're never going to find out. Yeah, I'm really sad about the tree and unicorn. And we are never going to find out? Like, never. Yeah. Aw. Well, Moria ate all the shadows on the island. Those zombies are no longer animated. That's right. That's right. Damn. That's upsetting. Um, I will pet the boy. Like a baby. I think there's some... I think there's going to be some jokes about bones and stuff from now on. I don't know if you've noticed that, but people really seem to be into the bone jokes. Does your translation call them bone jokes? The dub called them skull jokes? Yeah, but I also called crocodile crocodile face. You know what? Fair. Why would I expect you to use the term that your translation used? <laughs> you raise a good point. I don't know why you're questioning this bone jokes um and later on when i explain my reason that i think people are okay with his perversion i'm gonna make a better bone joke <laughs> <laughs> yes god damn it that's good that's good that's good that's good that's good that's good write that down write that down everybody hey write that down hey write that down <laughs> okay uh-huh um so, so i'm gonna try not to talk that way anymore quite rude uh-huh not not appropriate holiday talking at all i it, i love that if um, we, if we had at. started this sooner wouldn't this have made more sense if we timed it for this to be the one we got to at halloween <sighs> right i'm kind of sad i was thinking when i was reading this like yeah this is a this is a strange christmas lead up but on the other hand your sister's partner is really kind of a more of a nightmare before christmas person so i just like to think of it as yeah, my I mean, way of just, pulling he, him into it i have never met a super athletic jock with such goth energy in everything he likes. Yes, absolutely. That is a fair like, statement. If he weren't so, so handsome and fit, he would have been a goth. Yeah, and he's like about to do his very first 100k um, run, and yet he is very goth. Yeah, like, like the only reason he's a jock is because the other jocks wouldn't let someone like him not be a jock. He was dragged into the life. It was chosen <laughs> for him. Only one person has ever reached this arc in October. Interesting. Weird. Hmm. Okay. They did it right. Um, I, oh, we're just talking about I family. Really, Don't worry about it. <laughs> I really feel like, because um, we argued, you and I argued about who we thought had the worst, most tragic backstory out of all of the members yeah. here. And I would say he's right up there on the list. As I, far I think as tragic Robin backstory and Brooke go. are my contenders for most brutal although and i think nami's up there too yeah i did have a kid who told me a different kid who told me that yeah the jock life did choose him um that for them nami was so personal and so in their face they had to stare at the mom while she was shot that for mm. them nami was a breaking it broke them which yeah. i thought was but for me nami broke me because i hadn't seen how deep the rabbit hole goes yet like one piece backstories hadn't been quite so hard hitting before even Sanji's which is insanely brutal like the ante just got upped but I feel like this one and Robin's are fucking other level like yeah I I'm honestly glad Frankie's comparably wasn't as bad so that it didn't just feel like every backstory from now on had to be like global melodrama levels of tragedy yeah I absolutely agree um, because Frankie, unbelievably enough, yeah. was a break. <laughs> Which <laughs> was is crazy to think about break? because it should be. In a normal series, I think it would be one of the more tragic backstories. Frankie's backstory is 100%. ridiculous sad. He nearly dies and has to rebuild himself out of junk as a cyborg uh, with yeah. his mentor lose, uh, leaving who was being taken away because of his failures. However kind of feels like a break compared to Ohara and uh, Brooke. 
I would absolutely agree. Oh, I need to say something now and let's make sure this gets into the um, um, edits because I'm warring with somebody in the comments because a kid told me about. Oh my Just so God, everybody's yeah, wondering, you're picking fights? Okay. I, well, I have a different ability to pick a fight than they do. Uh -huh. <laughs> I don't know if you know this, but like I have my voice here so I can pick that a fight true. better. That is true. The yeah. commenter's voice is not in the video. That is true. Yeah, so... So I literally can pick a better fight. <laughs> so uh -huh. this kid was like, look what this person said. And I was like, that is actually ignorant enough that I'm going to do this. Um, okay. Wow. Somebody said that I was wrong. It wasn't a shipwright. It's a carpenter. That's what Frankie is. And I just want to read <laughs> the definition hell? of shipwright for them yeah. so I can help them out a little bit. I saw that so comment too. And I was like, this is some pedantry. <laughs> <laughs> so a shipwright builds and repairs boats of all sizes from light vessels like canoes to heavier, heavier vessels like naval ships and yachts. They generally work in shipyards, small boat yards, marinas, and other workshop environments. So as I said, yeah. do shipwright. We have, do, we have any, do we have any proof that this man's built a boat, though? <laughs> yes. Yes. Frankie? Has this, yes. Has this man built a boat, though? <laughs> Like all the different boats that he built that Tom was like, you need to take care of these boats. <laughs> <laughs> but is he repairing I was like, Are you a boat kidding though? Me? See this person? Czar? Yeah, that's exactly what I was like. Fight me, bro. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get to thoughts on Kuma. I think we gotta save Kuma for the end. Kuma's gonna dominate a lot of the end of this. Yeah, I just the problem is, is I want to burst through all of this so Let's we can all sit around it. with Kuma. Let's hit it so we can get to Kuma. Let's, all right. They go out sailing, Nami crashes, right? They, Brooke's like, I can't, turns out I can't go with you for some reason. Why? Reasons. Oh, okay. Reasons. And then they leave them. Reasons I don't want to talk about that are very mysterious. Also, mysterious I don't reasons. have a shadow. <laughs> You know Look what this is? Mouth. This is great reenactment. People are getting yeah. not only a, a really wonderful look at this story, but also reenactment. That's what they're here for. Honestly? <laughs> no, the pedal goes up. Zora, the pedal can't go down. The pedal goes up. Now, you might ask, how does the pedal go up if it doesn't go down? <laughs> I, now, let's move on. <laughs> Don't even worry about that. Don't forget there's ghosts. Uh... <laughs> Don't forget, we find out about all the different yeah, systems, the five channels of the boats yep. with the two zeros, like so many cool things going on there. I love the Mini Mary. Can we just take a moment um, to talk about how much I love the Mini Mary? Yeah, we can. Recent chapter of the lot podcast. Um, Aww. This person, I can't read this all. Oh, that's thank you. I can't read it out loud, but uh, just, I did you read know. it and it's very sweet. Thank you, Manjot. Manjot? Manjot? Man Man, Manhot? Let me look. Manhot Sinju. I think that'd be a Manjot, right? Based that, off right. the last name? I got the, that's maybe. a J. They'll let us know if we're wrong. And if we're creeps, they can tell us. Um, the Oops. Mini Mary, I mentioned it in the previous stream too. I talked about it. I can't get enough of her. I love her. I want to hug her. She is the best. You missed nothing. Nothing happened, Jokey. And then... Um, not, every time <laughs> someone asks that, we need to say it. It's not going to get old. <laughs> hey, Cricket. Hey, Cricket. If you finish the edit as fast as you thought you did and you're here, what if you leave it in every time that happens? That's, that's such a bad idea. But wouldn't it be funny if you left in every single time? No, wait, wait. Okay. Cricket, hear me out. Hear me out. Future editing Cricket. You're watching this. I like to put a little funny clip at the end. Okay. Can you save all of the clips where one of, where someone asks, what did I miss? And we say, oh, don't, uh, mama says, no, nothing, uh, nothing, nothing happened. Can you nothing save happened, all of those? It. And at the end on the outro, after we show the final clip, can you just show like all of the and bits? And have a counter, yes, saying, Red Dragon, yeah, with a counter. Yeah, what did I miss? And mama saying nothing, nothing happened. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what i feel like you just did trick oh, it what yes, i did with you yes. when i said will i get a gold star and yes, it'll come yeah. up on the screen <laughs> <laughs> that's <laughs> you were like i'm paying uh, editors we i get to do that to other people <laughs> <laughs> thank you for the subscription <laughs> thank you celio celio and cricket are the same person oh that's right yeah. mama did you notice in the previous stream where you said you wanted them to have a rowboat or something and then drop 
referred to a mini Mary. Yeah, I did. Oh, right. Yeah, I, I hinted at that by saying some kind of mini Mary for the new boat. I forgot that I made that. Sneaky, sneaky draw. Oh. I would expect nothing less of you, Eugene. Here we go. Then we after go. she crashes, a few people go on to shore because they're stupid and they don't know how to get out. And there's a Cerberus-like dog trying to take them over. So that's why they have to go. Um, I told you that I didn't particularly enjoy the idea of Nami crashing into things because it makes no sense. Nami has yeah. way too good of ability as a weather witch slash crazy um, inspirational navigator. Yeah. So it was kind of eh. So then later on in the in the arc, what did we say about that? Well, that it what I what I came to is for me, it was before we knew what water what thriller bark was. So my read on it was it makes sense. And it was a hint that something about the island isn't normal and that it, it's like it was coming at her in a way that didn't make sense. So my thinking is that she only crashed because thriller bark is a boat and it was meant to be our hint that something's weird about the island. Yeah, I'll allow that. Um, Manjot Sadu, no, we just suck at it. Your name is very easy for a very, very huge number of people to pronounce. We're just not them. Yeah, I, We're the, just the not. reason I eventually thought Manjot instead of Manjot or Manhot was I realized the last name sounded Indian and I was like, oh, that's just a J. <laughs> I, I gotta drop, stop overthinking drop it. That's give just a them J. five drop. And Again? meanwhile, okay. I'll say that even if you don't pronounce the J and you end up pronouncing the J as an H, then your name becomes Manhot. And let's be honest, that's a good name. Just tell people right out in the open that um, you're a hot man. And I'm, I'm here for that every day. So either way. There are people on this uh, who follow us who do push-ups every single time Drock does push-ups. I'm also just terrible at pronouncing names. That's a, that's a thing about this me. This person, well, yeah, Katu. Uh -oh. Katu uh -oh, said this to me in the thing. Protective band. Are you there? Can you hear me? Am I talking? Yeah, just I couldn't tell which earbud was which at first because uh, the protective band fell off the left one too now. This is a thing that we said before. Mama, if you could have a One Piece pirate ship, it should be an island, an island so I could have all my different animals. Yes. And I came up with a name, um, but the very first name for my ship, because it was seasonal, would be a, it would be like a thriller bark, only not creepy, way less zombies. Um, way fewer the first zombies. Name I came, way fewer zombies. And the first name I came up with was Comfort and Joy. So, oh. so your ship is the Comfort oh. and Joy? For now. For now. Uh, the that, Mama Ark. I... Love that. So the people in um, our the people in our book club have been coming up with names for my island ship. I have been so busy I that love, I haven't been checking up with book, book club enough lately. I love the Cerberus. I don't know if you know this about me, but I like puppies. So, and This will tie into a fan theory mean things later. about my puppy? No, no, no. This will tie into a fan theory uh -huh. later. I, I've never noticed this before, but Impel Down is referred to as Hell. The gates yeah. of Hell were protected by that three-headed dude. Because of that, you compared him to a Cerberus, right? And then yeah. immediately after that, we meet another Cerberus. And I have to say, there is a fan theory I can't talk to you about yet, but it's about Cerberuses that this is incredible supporting evidence for. And I'm not usually yeah. a subscriber of this theory. So those of you who like the Cerberus theory, and if you know it, you know what I'm talking about. It kind of fits in because our third Cerberus was right in between those other two. I mm. I don't think there's nothing to that. I'm very... When I saw this, I started to think about the other... Um, the three-headed dude and and I called him a Cerberus. And then we saw this Cerberus and I was like, we're, the, the theme threading throughout it has to connect eventually. It just does. Yeah. So no, I'm interested. It's, uh, no, it's it, there's something to this. Yeah. When, I like that he has one fox head too. Yeah, when we can get to the Cerberus fan theory which is uh, at the halfway point, the the foretold halfway point um where we also get to do a Blackbeard video, uh I I will tell you about how your Cerberus observation ties into something that the fan base has been loving to talk about for a long time. It's very interesting. Thank you, Mary Fell. Have a Thank good sleep. Thank you. Have a good night. 
Oh, we actually talked um, about our favorite um, cover story okay. so far, and uh, it was Ace for both of us, right? Yeah, it was the Ace one. Ace hunting Blackbeard uh, is just so fun. I'm not allowed to read ahead at all. Not right now, Guys, no. I don't think until but, the halfway point you can. But I'm... Uh, give the boy a treat. But I maybe know that we're going into the red line because I maybe read ahead. Oh my god. I just what only read one. to there. I only read to there and it wasn't my fault. In my defense, <laughs> um, in my defense, I knew I wasn't allowed to read any further, so I didn't, but then I did. Uh <laughs> Yeah, that makes sense. That's a good defense. Um, what happens next? Okay. Like all of the the weakling trio so get separated. The from The weird. Right? I love the weird. Um, going through the Victorian woods in the coach. Love. I love how he's like. I'm trying to tell you this is Victorian. We're in a coach. God damn it. Um, <laughs> and I love the pulling up to the castle and the the atmosphere and the zombies. Like, just this is one of the most atmospheric arcs that he had done up until now mm -hmm. and i think it's it was so delicious the animals and the dancing and i bet you as an anime i was thinking like this must have been absolutely freaking wild like the singing and the cacophony of sounds i think the anime i'm mixed on here because i think the budget didn't feel quite as high it didn't feel quite as well animated as any's lobby did however the music was really, really good. Bink Sake apparently had been being composed for years before it was even in the manga. Like, being composed for the anime before he put it in the manga with the person he wanted to compose it. <laughs> this person, I love it when you read ahead. It's so fun and so tempting, but the fans in me want to help you to trust us when we say don't read ahead. Listen! I didn't if, read ahead. If you I didn't just know get, that if you didn't get far into the next arc, it's fine. But like yeah. I said, we're approaching a halfway point. This is these next few arcs are all telling the final saga of the halfway point. And that means that drama is pretty intense. So like if you go too far, you might ruin your ability to talk about what you just read at this point. Yeah, that's why I stopped. Mm-hmm. It, just um, a little bit's not going to hurt, but we're heading into I, yeah, territory. That's why I stopped. Oh, it's push ups time for you? I thought we just did, did push, -ups. You push ups. No, that was pushing the zombies. Uh, um, I like okay. that when Chopper and Usopp and um, Nami are there, that they're like, oh my God, zombies. They're freaking out. The zombies mm -hmm. come at us. So terrifying. Because it was such a good juxtaposition for the way that Frankie and uh, Luffy and all of them walked up when they were like, huh, zombies. I... And then Luffy is like, look at these old injured men. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, this An is old exactly... man with severe wounds. It's so funny. This, man, this old man has severe wounds. It was exactly um, the perfect way to see the difference between the two groups. I freaking loved it. Watching, I, because he loves walk-ups, so watching the difference between these two groups' walk-ups to the castle was absolutely delightful. It was everything you'd hope for. And where is Usopp getting all of these freaking outfits? Because this outfit is banger. I love, Usopp is dressed to kill. This outfit implies to me that Usopp was worried they might run into a zombie island and ahead of time bought a bunch of, like, exorcist gear. Yeah. Yeah, it also says that he's actually afraid of dead people ahead of time because he's he's prepared for this shit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but Usopp, he's top tier in his I in his uh at some point. thriller bark. Oh, and twenty pushups so far. Okay, I guess I did miss one. I don't see it scrolling up, but people are telling me I did. Should I just believe them? I don't know. I'm just gonna believe bad. everybody. I couldn't scroll up high enough to find it, but I'll believe everybody. Hey, Chuck, but I'm I'm telling you right now, kids are bad. Yeah, that's right. You've got a good part, a good point, Vert. Maybe Usopp has since meeting Dracul Mihawk. Yeah, once you meet Mihawk, you gotta up your drip. You feel, you feel like I you're just letting discovered the team that down. you can't do tricep push-ups with an art glove on. It's a bad idea. <laughs> I'm really glad you figured that out. Yeah. Um, <laughs> turns out requires you to put a lot of tension on your outer hand. 
um, didn't work too well. No, the, the funniest plate part joke, of the, Oh my god. The plate joke with Sindri is brilliant. The the saddest Absolutely draw hat backstory. Brilliant. The pull between Brooke, Robin, and Nami. Holy shit, it's tied. Tied 45% Brooke, 45% Robin. I don't think I I'm at vote. all in the wrong. I didn't either, but I don't think I'm I don't think I could have because I don't know who I picked between those two. So I, I think I'm either. entirely in the right to say that they're comparable. Because the fucking yeah. people cannot decide. Yeah. I don't think we need to run off. I've never I seen that before. That's that kind of tied. amazing. I think it's yeah, perfect kind of that amazing. it ended this way. Mihawk is out there inspiring the world. Some days when I go to work and I look at my fit, I think to myself, if I met Mihawk Hawkeye today, would I be humiliated? And then I go back in and do better. <laughs> that's the that's the thought. That's the thought process. And I honestly, every day I hope is meet Mihawk Day. Every day should be meet Mihawk Day. Now that there's Dr. a live action Hawkeye, actor, you can. Oh, he was so good too. Like he hit right. He he was he as was far as Mihawk cast. went. Yeah, the casting in yeah, general he was, was pretty phenomenal. So he was casted so well. Doctor Hogback being such a letdown to poor Chopper just broke my heart for Chopper. Don't meet your heroes, kids. Yeah, thank you, Greg. I'm glad unless, that you and I are on the same page in our fit. And, unless I'm your hero, because I will live up to expectations, but also pick better heroes. <laughs> You live up to expectations because your here because your hero level is so low. Yeah, like like I'll live up to your expectations, but also pick better heroes. <laughs> if your heroes can live up to their expectations, pick better ones. <laughs> um. Okay, so we meet Doctor Hogback. Finally, find that in Long Town is when Usopp goes to Master Bar to protect his arms. Ah, oh, yes. Aw. Thank you. Look at this person. I'll pick Mama. Yeah, I'll live up to it too. <laughs> my height is low. <laughs> okay, you know what, Poodle? It's not cute. That's a bad look on you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think that this is a very, very hard day to be Chopper. So hard that Santa got me a Chopper so that I could hang out with Chopper. Try to be your own hero. Um. I think, though, that this arc was so gross because of one particular thing. Drop and give them five. What uh, do you think the one again. particular thing is? Okay, uh, I'm going to say Absalom as I head off. Oh, I hate him so much. What a piece of crap, disgusting, pervy, gross, bleh, bleh. Two, three, four, five. Now that we've taken this over, have I got enough to delete his art yet? Whoop. Oh, we back. <laughs> I said nothing. <laughs> How much is it to delete your art? To delete my art? Uh, 10,000, yeah. but also, man, that'd be a shame because things are actually looking good this time. I was just curious. This No, I don't want to delete this art. I just want to know how close I am to deleting some of your oh, art. Oh, another I time, yeah. It. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, no, I only have 9.5 thousand, but you should know I have been saving up for... You're getting close, yeah. ...for the arting. Absalon is one of the most disgusting creatures on the face of the earth. And Naz, Nazar Worldo, because this one is going to be good, and he's doing like a foreground background thing. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Um, But Zerworldo, having Nami could... be... I just want to say I'd save delete your art for when you think it could be improved. Like if you think I could be doing a better job. Uh, all right. Sorry. Keep going. Oh, I'm not playing that game with Pearl and Absalom and Spandam. It would be kill, kill and kill. Mama, save it for the end of next arc. That might be a good point. Thank you, Paladin. Um, seeing Nami vulnerably just being in the shower and just trying to have a nice life and have a delicious shower after a long time and have somebody pin her against the wall naked and know that they were leering at her naked body. Think, didn't he also lick her? Yes. Because she said, "Ah, oh, that feels like a rough blah, blah, blah. I'm going to make you my bride. Like, ugh, oh, ugh, sorry. I threw him should be dead. Yeah, he is horrific he he licks her and he is a sexual predator and then we're supposed to just be like yeah it's fine that he didn't get killed and the anime would it made it worse i imagine it would 
Because watching this, I was like thinking how glad I was that I didn't have to see it as kind of like in motion. Yeah, this it's was one bad of the enough. worst things to watch. It's horrific. Ooh. Yeah, it's gross. All right, sitting comfortably I was again. Horrified. Watching though, because right after that happens is when we get to see team number two and it and it kind of reminds me it's another one choose your competitor and then mm. in comes the second group and they've got their backpacks and they have their appropriate things and they're armed and they come up and then luffy is like sit <laughs> and in the first one they're like oh my god we're gonna get killed and then luffy's like good boy oh you're a good boy and then the dog moves and he beats him up and i was like and then he becomes friends and it becomes his pony and I was thinking, this is such a perfect um, foil between these two groups. We can see exactly what they are like. But I also feel like I'd like to see some of the weaker players actually hang out with some of the stronger players sometimes. It, I think it was nice in this case for the split to be forced to see the weaker crew have to survive on their own. But I, I do agree that it's nice to see them play off each other. But I think we got that in Eddie's lobby. So for me, it's nice to have the break here of the weaker crew and the stronger crew being split up. The chick coming out of the painting must have been terrifying in the anime. Um, weirdly enough, no, I just don't think they put enough, the right emphasis on it. I will say I did show the clip of Luffy pushing the zombie back in the hole because it might be one of the funniest gifts to have ever been created. It is. I literally watch it funny. for everything now. And I want to use so it on funny. kids when when a kid puts up with their hand and I know that they're just going to say something that is completely irrelevant. I, in my mind now, I watch the Luffy <laughs> clip of him pushing the zombie back down. And that's what I see in my head when a kid is like, Hey, Hey, and they stick up their oh. hand and I'm like, no, no, this is going to be not on point. <laughs> I just see oh, that in my head. Great. now. That's, that's hilarious. That's comedy. <laughs> um, this is a really good arc to have now because it's really good for us to start to know kind of the limitations of some of the things that the doctor is doing and the being able to take things like shadows and infuse them in somebody else's body and have two bodies animated at the same time, piecing together things, et cetera, et cetera, because it kind of, um, even though this one is crass and everyone seems quilted together, Mm -hmm. Um, I know, God, no VR. I would never, I please never talk about Luffy being in my class again. Um, because <laughs> these people are quilted together, but you can kind of see like, this is the low level doctoring when he's trying some stuff out, but you can actually see what the other doctor might be like that Kuna has, who is like the top of the top and is said to be 500 years in the future. I think Dr. they're already trying Vegapunk. to elude. Yeah, I think they're already trying to allude to the fact, like, if you're seeing this, and this is a person who feels almost like they're in the Victorian era and they're ahead of time, imagine the things that are possible for people who are 500 years further in advancement, right? So even though this was all fun and it all feels like um, this dark noir um, drawing inside of a Victorian Gothic horror, I also started to think about how it really kind of reminds you of if this is what's capable at this level with these people, what is capable with this other doctor? And then when we meet Kuna at the end and we start to find out who he is and why he is the way he is, then you start to really question like, holy crap, what are they capable of? And it starts to make the wheels turn more. So I think that's what made this um, arc so cool for me. Power scaling doctors. Yeah, it kind of is though, isn't it? Because Power scaling of that's scientists, exactly, yeah. it really felt like it was. If you see this and what they're capable of doing here, then it does power scale or it does power scale science and, and medicine. I, I genuinely and, think science is a power system in one piece. And like, like yeah. think about the crew. Sure. We have people who use devil fruits, people who don't, we, we have people who use martial arts and people who don't science is the exact same way. Uh, chopper, Usopp and Frankie all have science as part of, or the main component of their arsenal. And science is a power system in one piece that has the exact same scaling as martial arts hockey, which we don't know much about yet, but, clearly has levels to it as alluded to with the conversation with yeah, white beard right. and no, shanks uh and de and devil fruits and weapon skills and which no, are, I mean, yeah, those are martial arts. 
you're right nami uh she yeah her science for her her science is usops though like she's not building it herself uh she's very smart just not no, a scientist. but if we're talking about just brain ability and stuff mm-hmm. nami i'd put nami on but, that list but i well. think science is a is a power uh, system in one piece and i think like, robin is not not science like people often I, forget robin, that archaeology requires a great deal of different types but, of science but i'm talking about them. like science as far as the power system is like ability in making things for fights because i think that is scale no, in a very disagree. shonen way in one piece um I was so glad that we got to see the bow and anchor for the ship's wheel. We got to see the gun inside of the lion's head and the anchor rope and the little. I think it was amazing. So I was super happy. I liked the the boat design continued through this whole thing. And I kind of felt like it was really cool for us because we were getting to see this whole awesome boat thing. And then in the background was this cool story. So they were so different from each other that I didn't feel like it crossed over and it was kind of cool. Uh, the other thing I was going to say though, is that then we had Enru's great space mission inside of um, this arc as well. So for me, I was like, there's two Frankenstein arcs taking place at the same time. We're just not paying attention to one and seeing them oh. as being two Frankenstein arcs because oh. the entire Enru flashback that was taking place in all of these different pages was another person who was a scientist who was putting together um, robotic artificial yeah. intelligent people and using all these different parts and um, creating pre- people at the same time and having an army that was taking place. So for me, I felt like we were watching um, two, pet the boy, two different kind of oh, mad like scientists mean- making people and then on top of that it was juxtapositioning what might be taking place for people like um people like our big bad bear in the future because we were being able to see what was possible does that make sense to you no i get that i i think the science as a power system is being made more more present pardon me Science as a power system is being made more present in this arc for sure. And we, I think we do see but that in the cover story as well, which I hadn't thought about. But it's also that the cover story was showing us at the same time, like here are the two types of Frankenstein building that you know of now. Mm. And then um, at the same time, you don't see how the big bad bear is made. Mm-hmm. And so thanks for your subscription. Um, and so because of that, it made me be like, huh, I'm seeing these two and I'm not even getting to have a look at Dr. Vegapunk, who's apparently so, so far ahead of, of these guys and what they're capable of. And so I started to see what he was doing with the building of these robot guys and then thinking about what um, the gross thriller bark doctor was doing. And I was like, if you could combine these two abilities of creating a body that is um, made of all these difficult materials and that's got AI, but then also put spirit into it. If you could change a person this much, what would that be like? And then boom, Kuma. So I thought that was interesting. All right. And Enaru is more of an engineer than a scientist, but I think here's the thing. Just like this is such a tangent, but I think this is important for how we look at One Piece power scaling Everything is about specializations. There are types of devil fruits. There are types of martial arts. Whether you're a kick style, a brawler, a swordsman, that matters. Science is the same way. Engineers use science as a power system in One Piece. So do pharmacologists. So do uh, roboticists. So do weapons manufacturers. Everybody has their specializations, and some of them do. Some scientists will do multiple, but like every single power system in One Piece has specializations. It has people who are good at different types of things within that power system, and science is no different. Anaru saying he's more of an engineer than a scientist, I think is fair if we're using real world terms. But if we're talking about how science works, I'm in not talking about Anaru system, either, though. Yeah, you're talking about the people sending up the robots. I'm talking about the man who eventually chokes on dumpling while gazing at the moon and seeing an explosion. Yeah, that guy. Very different. But uh, I think Anaru still does use science as a weapon with the arc maxim. I would agree. And I would also say that an engineer is a scientist. But yeah. when you're watching the man who eventually chokes on Dumbling, whose name I don't know, um, Dumpling Dyer, that's what I'm going to call him. Um, Dumpling Dyer. When, yeah, I think it's appropriate. He's a pretty skilled secret agent. Are you sure you can take him born? He's called Dumpling Dyer. <laughs> I guess it doesn't really 
doesn't sound like a born thing. You know what it sounds like? Metal Gear. I'm not going to guess about um, Vegapunk's design quite yet. Uh, Let me tell you, yeah. you're wrong. Oh, okay. I know yeah, he's very whatever, tall. I saw yeah. his skinny ass legs. You'll you'll guess whatever you want about Vegapunk, and you will be wrong. Vega Punk. All right, well, I'll do that later. <laughs> um. So when we move through and we find out that the lady died ten years ago, like I was, I was glad for the characters that they got to move through things slowly. But I just felt like I knew it was going on pretty early. In and this. you wanted them to figure out it was an evil castle yeah. and you were just waiting like just guys kind of like come on guys guys it's an evil castle <laughs> you, you gotta know this by now they're stealing the shadows and putting them into these like the fact that you're not picking up on this is they're laying it down pretty thick so these aren't the I sneakiest to... dudes <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah the postpartum boob, boob job Ugh. so gross I'm with you on that Oh my god! I kind of like. Oh the, yeah, yeah. It, they talk about it. They even talk about it. Hog, hogback right? is terrible. Like ew, just ew. I like the ghosts though. I like the ghosts going through people. I like the chick with the ghosts. What's I her love name again? Perona. You okay? Perona. I knew you'd eventually love Perona, but you, when you saw how much people loved her, were worried she was joining the crew and wanted to hate her until you were certain she wasn't coming along. As soon as I knew she wasn't joining the the crew, I just got to like her a lot more. P Perona is a top tier henchman. Like I think she is it's one of the best henchmen in the series. I, was, I think she's amazing. I was also because I didn't want her to be part of the crew because I knew we weren't getting that many more crew members. And I was like, mm -hmm. we just got Frankie, and then boom, we Frankie's brand new seat is barely warm, and and on comes a skeleton. So I was like, can we can we not get the next one so quickly? Like yeah. Ugh. I, um, I really, I love that really all of like them have Perona. to apologize for Luffy. But this, this one of the things I like best about Thriller Bark mm -hmm. is it's one of the funniest freaking arcs we've had God, yet. The comedy is constant. There's so many amazing it's jokes old. and bits. Yeah, like all of the parts with Luffy, especially because Luffy plays such a great straight man, mm -hmm. and. So Luffy coming in and them going like, hey, what are you guys doing here? Says Luffy. Uh, we're zombies. So we were buried, you know, rotting. Yeah, I was rotting. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I Okay. okay. Actually, you just pointed something out, out that's incredible about Luffy's character writing. He is built to be either the goofball or the straight man as is needed man. because he's dumb yeah. enough to not realize he's being a goof or to not realize that there's like a social etiquette that people are observing and he can just be blunt and be the straight man. Like exactly. he can switch between both and expertly and he does it so well in this Luffy's arc. character such gold to write with. Like it's amazing mm. how many times he's just like, in this case, Luffy is completely clueless about the fact that this, that he's the straight man and it's, and it makes it so much stronger. And then boom, he flips immediately, like two pages later, and he is the comedic joy. I, yeah, it yeah. does show how well Oda understands horror, that he can do a horror thing and, while adding in all this comedy. But I just, isn't it weird that we have this defined term for the straight man, but like we don't have a great term, like the, the goof, the funny guy, like there's so many terms for the other side of it. Yeah, I agree. It was interesting for me reading this because I was telling you that I thought it was incredible that Oda really takes advantage of his want to try to write into so many genres. Like he, he writes everything from kind of like um, Arabian Nights and a thousand and one uh, Alibaba and the, and the 40 thieves and all the way through all these different things. And in this one, he's kind of writing Victorian horror fiction and he gets to write through all these different genres. You were telling me that there was actually a manga that does that even more. Yeah, I think we mentioned it last time, but Hunter Hunter is changes not like it changes everything arc to arc when it wants to do a new genre. Uh, yeah. I, I do think you'd like Hunter Hunter and I think we should check it out at some point, but Berserk is definitely next on the menu. Yeah. <gasps> Especially because recently I just bought myself, guys, I just bought myself the nerdiest workout equipment. I know you've probably seen them on TikTok, but I just bought the Guts Berserk training sword as a uh, workout equipment. I'm so fucking, I'm so, so ecstatic about ever getting my big sword. I <laughs> Thrilled, thrilled about my big sword. You just bought yourself a giant workout sword? 
a giant sword that's whole purpose is being too heavy to really be a, a training sword. So you just do like sword poses and stuff to, to get fit. This is one of the most hilarious things I've heard. <laughs> no They're really, really you. good for exercise equipment. It's just kind of dumb, but I, I'm so excited. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, excuse mm. me, you there. I just saw how frighteningly strong you are. Could I please have a word with you? <gasps> An old man with severe injuries for injuries for crying out loud. It's a zombie. No, I'm an old man with severe injuries. Best fucking what? joke in the good arc. Oh my god. Comedy. That, this whole thing is so good. It couldn't be more peak comedy. That's so good. Yeah, I I loved this arc for the comedy. I don't have enough connections. You know when you can feel something like as I was reading this, I was thinking there are hints everywhere in here. Um and and I've got a bunch of them and I've pulled them out and stuff, but there are hints everywhere in here that I just, I'm missing like the tiniest bit of information to unlock. Mm. That made me so mad. As I was reading this, I had to just start being like, you've got to be into it for the sake of the arc and quit thinking about it, about its hints and just allow it to be what it is. But having two warlords here, once again, mm -hmm. We're not supposed to have warlords coming together all the time. And once yep. again, we've got warlords coming together. And so having two warlords here, I was like, God dang, we're coming up to something. I'm really hoping that's soon. Super soon. Like I said, the, we're heading into a dramatic territory. And yeah, I think you have the media literacy that you're, you're just feeling it. But yeah, the uh, end of the, the first half of one piece we are after this heading into the saga of arcs that tells the story of of the end of the first half yeah i would agree so i want to know if there's good. more to this the four um the four the four emperors no chapter 449 is called the four monsters of thriller bark mm, which is and amazing it's about the generals yeah yeah um, and I want to know more about the four generals. Also, I want to know why they chose to put the Zoro Luffy picking his nose, of course, because because Oda loves nose picking. Uh, if I ever meet Oda and he's not picking his nose, I'd actually be surprised. <laughs> um, and then and then we have Nami, and behind them is the dragon. And I'm like, why did you choose to do this? Why does Zoro? It, why is Zoro looking at the dragon? In I, that I remember way? this was the cover image you you spent the most time thinking about was the was the one with the dragon, and what I said, and I think, odd. and now that I think you are done, you can agree that there's a reason that this argument makes sense. I think him harkening back to the dragon and using the term uh, monster was very intentional to make people think of his one shot monsters because Ryuma is yeah. uh, important to this arc. Yeah, and I don't disagree. I just think it was interesting the way that he mm -hmm. chose everything about it would have been uh, that would have been a lot more of an obvious thing except for the way that he chose to draw Zoro and the bemused look that Zoro had on his face while he was looking at the dragon. And this is why you came to a conclusion where you have now another theory about what Sanji might secretly be. It would be in my opinion it's equally you know okay so let me just say, I know uh -huh. that not necessarily and most likely uh -huh. my directions isn't right, right? Like, mm -hmm. I know that them being in four different areas, not supposed to be coming together and having them yeah. spread out across the world is important. But I know that it isn't necessarily done in the direction of uh, of the Cardinal Road. Because um, they by were the said way. to all be in the second half of the Grand Line. Exactly. But by the way, Oda, like, what a mess, man. Like, that would have been so cool. And, whew, and so I know that he's done something really cool with them and I've got to figure out the way in which that's done. And that's fine. I know mine isn't right. I knew it wasn't right, right to begin with, but it's a great way of place holding them for me so that I can think about them. Um, and that's kind of like Sanji when I think about Sanji being a dragon, because same thing, his leg he heating up. It, it would be interesting. Sanji doesn't know where he comes from. Um, it would be really logical for Sanji to be a dragon. Like, it would make sense. Some I mean, high-powerful dragon. he knows where he came dragon. from, because we did see him say he came from the North Blue. 
No. I right, think I mean, that he it did. Makes... He, that's a thing that no, he said. No, I know. I'm No, I'm I'm saying no to something I was thinking in my head. Okay. Um, <laughs> that was it to me. Okay. <laughs> I almost said it again cuz I started to think it again. <laughs> but I'm I have this feeling like there's all uh-huh. this thing all these things going on with Sanji that he's starting to come into and he's feeling parts of himself. Do does Sanji know his own backstory? Because we know that he was on the ship when it went down. It's tough to um, say. So you're you're wondering if there's anything about Sanji from before he met Zeph, before he was working on that boat as a kitchen as, assistant. Yeah. So like this person said, um, him smoking all the time. So like that one of the things dragony. that I said is, is that, yeah, the only problem is is that lots of the dragons in Japan are more water-based, but mm-hmm. still, there's something about that. So Sanji being a dragon kind of also makes sense. All right. Um, Do we and, want to throw this in the pile? Are you wanting to confirm button down on this one? Yeah, okay. Only because it could be very wrong, and I'm not taking Sanji being a demon off the table. Okay. We're not um, taking it off the table. I'm comfortable with them both. All right. Pedal goes up. So I like the idea of Sanji's backstory having some dragonish thing because when I was looking at this um, cover art, having the way that Zoro is looking at the dragon and the way that the other crew members are just standing on the dragon's back and just kind of enjoying it and not worried at all made it feel like the and I understand exactly what you were saying and exactly why you said it. And yes, the Ryu is very important in the arc. And yes, it's one of his original monsters. But it mm-hmm. also felt so familial. Not familiar. Very different. Familial. Yeah. And okay. they're found family. And so that it had that bit of a feeling to it for me. So I was right. like, hmm, I'm willing to stick that out there. Plus him cooking, working with heat. I don't know. Both the demon and the dragon thing worked for me for Sanji, but Sanji has got secret things going on. Like Sanji has got a history. I love that we haven't heard about it yet because it makes it something that's even more cool. He's, and, and I love that too, because when you've got a protagonist like Luffy, who's such a bossy britches because he has, he is so good. He is just that good as a protagonist that you, he does take a lot of attention away. And so you only think of him as being the proverbial farm boy. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But why doesn't it mean that Sanji can also be the proverbial fa- yeah, farm you've boy? Pointed out that there's only one character you think is more so good than Luffy. More so good. Well, you were talking about, there was a character you think the problem with them is that they're better than Luffy and uh, that that might uh, not be able to stay and stay. Yeah, exactly. Drop and give him five. Uh, uh, no. You guys didn't even realize the way that I was being mean though. <laughs> yeah. I know the way you're being mean. He's One, being mean because two, he wants me to talk three, about my four, forbidden four. prediction. That I don't want to talk about, but I know I'm right about my forbidden prediction. I know I'm right. Yeah. Forbidden. <laughs> prediction. Of the forbiddenness. Hey, cat's just in space caught it. It's the forbidden theory. That's the forbidden prediction is what I was referencing. Yeah, this person just said it about Ace dying. What? Forbidden we don't prediction. say it. I thought, we, I thought we didn't say it out loud, what the forbidden prediction this was. person said it. I mean, it, you have alluded to it heavily. To that being uh, your pr- forbidden prediction. Yeah, and... I don't want it predicted. You don't, you don't want to lock that in? Listen to me right now. I know I'm right. <laughs> you know you're right. No, you don't know. I know I'm right. Uh I saw a thing at one time when I already had that idea. I saw Uh a thing and I know I'm right. And I just know. We have viewers who watch for the first time with you, so I don't want to ask you what you saw, but should I ask you I'm still hoping I'm wrong and I read the thing wrong and a person was talking about something else, but... I had already predicted it over and over again. And was it, like, it's no, I'm true. Not Basically, from the chapter you've met Ace, you've been predicting he'll die. Like you hate the poor boy or something. You've just been hoping him dead for months. No, only off air. I'm only predicting it off air. <laughs> I never true. predict it on air. 
and I'm just. Uh, uh. Oh, he has uh, little barriers. Me, That's what Anarka. I'm forgetting. Did you not just see the Mary? The Mary just died. Okay, so one boat died. <laughs> no. I've said a whole bunch of reasons. I think that Ace, and I went back and I've been looking at other narratives, and this isn't something that I wanted to get into, but yeah. I went back and I'd been looking at a lot of other narratives once I found out what um, Ace's name was right when I first met him. And I started to go and look at all the different port keys that I know about and all the different stories I know where it has like passageways and protected ways and port keys into things. And like, seriously, it's like eight times out of 10 that they die, break, fall apart, become unusable, et cetera, et cetera. So if a person is a port key, I was like, no, that's not good. That's not good. Um, and then when this started to happen, because I told you before that I thought that Ace, um, I think I thought that Ace was going to be in trouble and going to be stolen, which he was. Um, and then it turns out in this arc, we find out that the piece of paper near the end, I do what I want. So we're at the end now that the piece of paper <laughs> at the end talks about how Ace is in current danger. And then Luffy is like, that's fine. He'd be mad if I went and helped him. Everything's good. And I was like, Luffy, man. Um, and so I felt like, I felt like when I saw that, then I, I said, this would be one of those times that Luffy um, Ace could maybe use the magic circles or the magic circles be used to go and get Ace or to leave with him if they eventually decide to actually help him out because currently Luffy is just like, everything's okay. He'll be great. Being captured is awesome. So, yeah. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, <sighs> Octagon is apologizing for saying it out loud. Look, it had been very clear for a long time what Mama Drock's forbidden prediction was. She just doesn't want to say it. Yeah. Are we, do you want it to be on the prediction counter? We, it no, doesn't I have to go I'm on there. Right. No, I'm right. Do you know you're right? You could be wrong. Anything no, can I'm happen. Right. No, I'm right. Fine. Put it in. I don't want to pressure you. Are you sure? Put it in. Kaido, you heard her. The forbidden prediction has been added to our prediction list. So sad right now. I leave it to Celio if they think that it's if he thinks it's a better idea to leave it in or cut it out from the video. Because he's been very, very excited to edit this. Okay. The, uh, Maybe they're the one who's the huge the video? Brook fan. They did the, the Brook edit. That's so nice. It's funny, though, how only the people who come in here mm -hmm. um, know some things because then kids will read me comments and I'll be like, yeah, I talked about that. And then I realize, oh, yeah. <laughs> so, with with the people of the uh, of the of this world. The, the, here's the thing, Greg. Mama doesn't know what's going to happen. Like, so I don't know if it should be cut out of the video or not, because this is a prediction. This isn't like spoiler information. And I think keeping it deep in this in is fine. It just is also yeah. the forbidden prediction you've wanted to not make. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, did you see the uh, the spoiler free book Brook video edit that someone that you were tagged in, by the way? Oh, that the was song? amazing. Yeah, that's done by our editor. I adore yeah, I adored it. It's so good. Uh, when you're caught up with the series, they did one with footage from the future that's beautiful that you're going to have to watch. Ugh. All right, should we keep going? Let's keep going. I'm sad we even talked about that. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. Um, <laughs> dude is huge, by the way. Like, when all of his his little minions run up to him. One of our seven warlords. Gekko they Morian? are. Yeah. They are so tiny. Seeing next to Gekko him, Moria hey? stand beside Kuma's crazy because those two being the same height, like 
when you've seen both of them tower over everyone, it makes so much sense. But something about them standing next to each other felt wild. Like, these are just two gigantic dudes. Yeah, like, absolutely ridiculously large. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Also interesting, then, because when you're looking at the rest of the castle, it doesn't feel like he should fit into any of the rooms in a regular way. Even the ones that are quite large, you're like, how is it possible that he is free run of the castle? But that's just a question I was asking from a... Um, okay, yeah, so I, th I thought about this myself. Here's my thinking, right? You know how royalty will have, like, servants' tunnels that they never go through that just connect everything? Yeah. I think Moria cares so little about... First of all, I think he stole this castle. I think he stole this fucking island. That's all, Ever since I, I we met agree. him, that's been my theory. He's a pirate and he has an island with a castle. I think he stole it. Like, I think this agreed. island... He didn't build this castle. Uh, no, it, agreed. Uh, that's been my theory all along. And I, I like to think that the reason he can only fit in certain areas is he doesn't give a shit. He's like, whatever, I don't... I don't need to live in a house that big. That's basically servants' quarters. They can do what they want. I have the cool zone I can hang out in. I would absolutely totally agree. <laughs> um, so I was thinking, like, he obviously hangs out in a few different areas, and then everybody else goes all around. Uh, is she pink? I didn't see her now Perona that I think about pink. it. Oh, yeah, you didn't do Perona color is... this time. Perona is very just, pink. It didn't work. For me, black and white was so much better for this. Overall, but I think it's very important to note just how pink Perona is. Yeah, so all of the um, her legs, the stripies, are all pink. Um, who were they pink or were they black? Look, 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 look. Black and pink, I would Perona. imagine. Uh, black and white. Her leggings are, are black and white. Her hair is pink. Actually, her outfit's mostly red. I remembered it being pinker than it was. Oh, okay. Yeah, red, black, and white. I'm going to send her to you. Black, Whoop. pink, and white. There's oh, a Perona. Okay. Awesome, thank you. Yeah. I'm excited about that. Yeah, she is pink. Her outfit is mostly red, white, and black. Okay. It's honestly a look. She's um, got style. Oh, she does have style. Yeah, I want to put her on the drip chart. She deserves a plate, but the problem is we're doing straw hats only from now on. Yeah, and you know why? The drip chart, I don't know how many of you were here for that, but my god it was long it was fun it was worth it but by god was it long and i think as the series gets longer and there's more characters we just can't keep up with it unless we preemptively sort it no but then it takes only to scroll at a certain point that i just don't think we can can the kids come out of emoji only now <laughs> can the kids come out of prison <laughs> are the kids allowed out of prison out. are they done being bad the room is no longer emoji. Be good, kids. <laughs> what the brook edit mama and Drock talked about. Um, you oh, should yeah. join the Discord. um Discord because people put things in there all the time that are super good. Yeah. Uh the brook and edit was basically an AMV done by our editor, and there's a spoiler version in the spoiler quarantine, but then there was a Mama Safe one that they also made. Yeah, and it was awesome. Okay, was you missed fantastic. nothing. You absolutely missed nothing. Nothing happened. Yeah. <laughs> it's the best bit. I hope people keep asking. <laughs> Not gonna get old. It's never gonna get old. Never. I love it. Uh, Power um, of the Jedi? Yeah, you've been here the whole time. You don't count. I've seen you. <laughs> cheeky monkey. <laughs> I, I think that as fun as this is, I'm going to go back and reread Th Thriller Bark later on. Mm -hmm. Some Because I once I have a few connections, I want to reread and see what happens. But... I think this would have been really fun as an anime. I was kind of, nothing happened. Um, I was thinking that it'd be really fun as an anime because there's so many moments, like the one that you sent me with Brooke when he's walking in and he's singing the song all oh, haunting in the background. It's, it's good. I, when I feel he, like yes. overall I don't love the anime of this section, but everything Brooke related because it's musical is so much, uh, such a good watch. Like, yeah. 
the music makes it. Yeah. When he sees the spider monkey and he walks up really casually with his amazing haunting song going in the background, I was like, God dang, this is one mm -hmm. I think I would have watched. I actually would have really enjoyed watching this one. I might actually, if you send me the whole, uh, a link that I can go oh, to. Oh God, arc, I, I think the anime is a lot longer to go through, but if you want to, you can, you are welcome to. I just think it would be worth it in this one just to enjoy it on the side as a thing, because I think that there was a lot of really interesting stuff in uh, this. I'll also say immediately, because if you're watching the background, you can't do subbed immediately. The dub is more worth watching because Ian Sinclair is in it now. And his, he is so goddamn good. And his Brooke is so stellar. Yeah. Ian I would Sinclair like to see that because as, you've talked oh about him God, time. Yeah. I mean, I showed you the one scene again. where he like, where he strolls in with the spider monkey. It's all that good. He is the best working English voice actor right now, in my opinion. Yeah, and I would like to see that because it was, it was so, it was so beautiful. It was just kind of like, I, I talked about it before, like the cacophony of sounds and stuff that I would like to see because in this particular arc, I was thinking like there's so many pieces in here where it would have had um, the background music and the the sounds of water dripping and all mm -hmm. of that would have just added to it because it has that right well, haunting feeling to here's it. There's something incredibly upsetting about the One Piece anime that I fucking hope I, this needs to get fixed in the, the One Piece, the new show coming out. You are right that it should be that way. Sound is a mixed bag when it comes to the Toei One Piece production because the music is incredible. The music is so good. One of my favorite soundtracks of all time. It's so good. The voice acting is incredible. They have such good casts in the English and Japanese. I've heard a lot of languages are bad. The English and Japanese are very, very good. Very, very good. Some of the best talent in both languages working. However, Toei Animation sound effects they use for One Piece are shit. They use the same recycled footstep sound all the time. They never adjust for the uh, what the room should be like. They never do like ambient sound effects to add atmosphere. The the sound effects in the One Piece anime are fucking awful. They're atrocious. This person just said that their sound effects are older than Brooke. So I think that describes everything that we need. Yeah. It, studio wit if there is anything they can improve at it's pacing if there's a second thing they can improve at for the one piece it's sound effects because the sound effects in yeah. one piece are by far the weakest part it actually makes me a little sad because when i was reading this you can you can feel the atmosphere it's thick mm -hmm. it's moist get over it moist is a good word here um <laughs> it's mossy it has that feeling so you know that you're going to hear like small water drips echoes that change depending on the size of the room and where they turn to the, the sound of trees rubbing branches against each other like there's so much opportunity in this arc to mm -hmm. create like absolutely delightful sound to create the atmosphere that you're looking for and it yep. makes me sad to hear that that wasn't the case it's it's a real shame because like one piece is a story with so much potential and there's so much atmosphere to it and the like even currently when the anime has never looked better, the sound effects are still like mid at best. Hmm. Like it, the look is incredible right now. It is incredible art direction, incredible animation, incredible storyboarding. Everything about the visuals right now is phenomenal. They are making episodes. One of the episodes that the one of the, the one that is so good, we're going to watch it together instead of you reading it because it's that good. Literally it's better to watch than read. It is such good animation quality that it it feels like better like like it is on the level of spider-verse for me as far as visuals it's that good looking and yet the sound mm. effects are still just like mid mm. what yeah, did they say what do you think of their zombies yeah we're in the section where we find their zombies love that sanji still couldn't still started beating up the other zombies when they started to try and fight women um yep. I love the idea that the zombies stay themselves for a while before they can come out of who they are. But I mean, I voted as Brooke's zombie being the best zombie because they're mm. it it is an incredible zombie, but like not to take away from Orr's Luffy because 
Or's Luffy oh, is freaking hilarious. Some of the best comedy there is. I think I'm doing I, Luffy Or's for me, but Brooke Ryuma is so good. Brooke Ryuma is amazing. And then to to have that fight be what it is and have his characters coming back from previous an- ma- manga, mm-hmm. that's amazing. It's really fun. Um, also love the Your Song t-shirt on Jagoro of the Wind, Zombie General. Amazing. <laughs> Something so fun about a zombie general in a t-shirt. I don't know. It's great. Oh, it's it's absolutely perfect. You, Especially you one imagine. that says Your Song. Now, I know it's probably because Luffy and Brooke are captains, but if, like, Zoro and Sanji are being put in just regular-ass high-grade zombies, you have to imagine that the people being put in the generals were big-deal pirates. Oh, 100%. Like, those were captains. Those were... I felt so bad, though, for Sanji. Like, he is getting (laughs) downplayed in a big way, which means... um, just speaking from a narrative point of view, Sanji is going to have to come from a more impressive background. Ooh. He has to. So last time because... you were saying he came from a poor background, but was that you just talking about him working on the ship? Are you wanting to change that now? No, the yeah, no, that's just his working on the ship. Okay. San, Sanji has to come from like some sort of better background because he, he is being absolutely, <laughs> He's being absolutely disrespected at every turn right now. So you have his poster being that picture of his weird round cartoon Sanji face. <laughs> then you have, then when he gets shoved into an animal on Thriller Bark, he's put into a penguin dog with the world's goofiest 1978's hat. Um, and, and just absolutely disrespected for his, yes, the dog pen absolutely disrespected for his um power levels and so because of this i think that sanji actually has to come from something more impressive in order for this to be um a thing so right. yeah i think that so we're predicting Sanji's... sanji has a more impressive background yeah Be- right. and i i don't know what he is he's he's something He is something that whole, the minute that he turned on his one leg and the whole dang thing turned into red hot fire lava, um, you're like, yeah, okay, you're not just a person, Sanji. I hate to tell (laughs) you this, but that's not a normal thing to do with one's leg. Oda said that his passion burns so hot that it makes sense. Are you sure? (laughs) Oda said it makes sense. sense, Yeah. Yeah. Oda says a lot of cheeky things I've been noticing. What well, it does seem like every once in a while, not to say this is this, but that it there's clearly a mystery somewhere. He will answer questions about that mystery in such a way as to say, like, oh no, um, here's a joke answer. Stop thinking about it. Oh, yes. Um, I'm not <laughs> arguing that it's centrifugal yeah. force. Um, Com- at all. Cito. I'm just I'm arguing about what happens when one puts that much centrifugal force into their leg and somehow rather than it melting or breaking their bones uh, it helps them. Uh, that's, that's hey, hey, Con, don't worry. Uh, nothing happened. You didn't miss anything. Oh, is there a new person? So, well, yeah, someone said happened. they came back and they're wondering what happened, which is cheating. They're they're baiting us because they've been here before, but I don't know. No, I'm here for their bait. Yeah, passion makes your leg lighting on fire be good, right? That's what I understand about science. Speaking of passion, you're... can we take a moment, rest in peace, Sanji's reputation, Oda. Um, <laughs> like, having, having Sanji understand what the background to having the invisibility fruit would be and having Sanji talk about why that would have been his go-to fruit to the point that he knew how to fight with somebody in that using that fruit because he had thought about it so deeply I I think that Oda said to himself this will be kind of funny and I also think and people are not gonna love my take on this and Uh that's okay um I also think it's lazy 
No, no, because... I, I think I think it's fair. It, it, it's a lazy way to have someone have an answer well, to how to figure it out. Thinking, yeah, yeah. I think that what he said to himself is, ooh, we've got this unfortunate thing going on where I've made it so this person is invisible and we need to have um, Sanji be able to fight in this moment. And I can't just have nothing happen. And I can't just have them come in here and be able to know where he was unless I have some um, secret way of him knowing. Oh, I know his his go-to devil fruit that he would have wanted to have is the invisibility because he's kind of a perv. And so he would have wanted to see girls. You annihilated his reputation and he's a straw hat. You took him from being a person who was kind of overly romantic, overly into women, and then who would do, you know, a couple of really questionable moments like the frickin' bathhouse and a few things like that. And you absolutely annihilated him for one little writing moment where you were kind of tripping over how to get him to know where Absalon was. And I just felt like you needed to have a different way because you absolutely took a giant leak all over his reputation and his character and it, and just made it so gross. It makes Sanji so much, so much worse. Yeah. And, 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 it, and in an arc where Zoro has never looked better. I don't think that it's, I don't think it's just a joke. Like, I know that a lot of people are like, well, it's in Japan and so da 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 da. Yeah. But I know that I talked to some of my Japanese students who also told me like, no, they absolutely hated this. It's a common thing. Everyone hates it. Yeah. Nobody in Japan is like, that just makes sense. Well, yeah. some people and, are, but they're not my friends and we're not and, braiding each other's hair. And I think like, it also, Oda has said in interviews that the reason he has things like Nami extorting people by showing her tits in the bathhouse is because yeah. he felt grossed out by watching anime where boys would consequence free spy on girls, which is why the yeah. idea of Nami taking control of that situation and being in charge of it felt appealing to him. So he clearly understands there's something wrong with it which is why it feels like he should be able to know that this is a joke he shouldn't make. And, and again, obviously we don't hate One Piece. We still love it. It's just, we can point out no. things we don't like. Yeah. And I think it's funny because when I talk about things that I don't find awesome, people get really concerned that suddenly I'm going to be like, Rawr. no, I'm in it. I'm in it mm -hmm. for the long haul. Not enjoying something. People don't enjoy crap I say nonstop. Yeah. It's just a thing people enjoy doing. They enjoy not here. enjoying me. And they're still here. <laughs> Um, and so when I was reading this, I was thinking like, it's just a little bit lazy. If you had taken just a moment and thought about it, you could have, you could have made this moment work and you wouldn't have had to assassinate his character in this way. Uh, I won't go into, I believe there are other subconscious reasons he wanted that fruit as well that I won't go into. Okay. Gross. Thank you, Dusty. It's worse. I don't, you didn't I don't say. think that's meant to be gross, but. Now I'm concerned maybe it's a future thing so um i think like i would like an invisibility fruit i think the invisibility fruit is awesome but it's not because i want to peek on people <laughs> can i say i have never wanted invisibility as a superpower it's one of the powers that has never appealed to me yeah okay every once in a while why some people wouldn't want it every once in a while i'm walking out on the street and i'm thinking i'm at a crosswalk right now i can cross the street if I wanted to sneak somewhere invisibly, I'd have to stand here naked waiting for someone to come by crossing the same way as me and creep close enough to them that cars aren't going to just go. Why is the crosswalk going? No one's there and run me over. Wow, that's and funny. A, I would just treat myself like a ghost and freak people out. I would more a, Epsilon the moments and that I would just be ghost like, oh, crosswalk button was hit. I don't see anything. I, um, cats, cats just in space you make a good point that i decided to be a twitch streamer not wanting to be invisible is not shocking yeah obviously <laughs> one of us has our face here and everyone can see them and one yeah. of us doesn't i think being invisible would be amazing no Especially no appeal for me <laughs> i live in this small town and when i go out everyone is like hello and knows who i am and i'm like wish i was invisible mm. Uh, very specifically, Mama Drock didn't say assassinating his character, and I think for that exact reason, that he already does come across pervy, it's assassinating his reputation, because his reputation. You, can, you can handle someone being a perv, and this doesn't go against the way his character was, but it assassinates his reputation because he feels like someone we can't trust in the same way after this. Yeah, 
Exactly. So then, so then it starts to make you worry. Like, I just want to go back to loving Sanji. And I do. And a lot of people are like, she likes Sanji more than Zoro. No, not necessarily. I just, I feel like you can't do a review about something and talk about all the things that you yeah. like and don't like, unless you are talking about some of the characteristics of all the characters that you find appealing and unappealing. Mm -hmm. uh, this for me, I just wanted to get to go back and enjoy Sanji and be and be like, oh, Sanji, I'm so sorry. Okay, here's what happened. I read that part and then I stared at the picture of Sanji and I went back like two pages and looked at a picture of Sanji before he said that. And I said out loud, Oda's about to make you say some things you're not going to be too happy about. I just want you to know. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> sorry, Sanji from two pages ago. <laughs> And then I moved forward again because I was like, oh, I feel so bad for you. Oh, yeah, so it's important. Someone someone asked what was talked about until now. They just got here. Do you want to tell them? Oh, uh, nothing's happened. Yeah, we good haven't to done know. All right. They're caught up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so I felt so bad for two pages Sanji that I went back and let him know. And then when we went forward... I was like, just so you know, Sanji, I'm just trying to see you who, how you were before this moment. <laughs> Sanji's wild because without his worst bits, I do like him better than Zoro. Without his worst bits, I think he's my my second favorite straw hat after Luffy. But his worst bits yeah. are there, so he's usually coasting on my list somewhere around number three or number five. Like, somewhere in it's that zone. It's pretty hard, man, because he's so cool. He's so the fucking boy. cool. <gasps> my boy! Yeah, and then Bellamy. and someone did say that they think that Oda made him be pretty I was going to cheat and, and give him a treat, stuff. even though you didn't pay for it because he won't show up otherwise. Um, no, somebody did pay for a treat time as well. <gasps> oh, somebody, okay. I missed that. Come here. So Come somebody here. said that they did do this in their opinion because they thought that there was too many good things about Sanji and that it kind of gives him, um, it kind of gives him some dullness on his shine, so it makes him less perfect. And I don't necessarily disagree. I think that could be possible, but I don't think that Oda fully thought through the the consequences of making Sanji suck so horribly in this moment and annihilating, like just pissing all over his reputation. Um, I feel that. Yeah. So the Robin wing thing, can we just have a moment for Robin? The, like, and the fact that her powers uh, aren't growing whatever she wants. She has to meticulously craft wings out of different pieces of her body, pieces of skin and muscle tissue to craft her own handmade wings out of body yeah. parts. That's so fucking sick. So Holy when shit. I was watching this part with Robin, I was thinking like, I was thinking all about her creating the aerodynamics, her creating the shape of feathers. Her creating, yeah. um, her All creating out of the her body that goes strong enough into her own back, and, and then she then has to flap them. Yeah, she flaps them exactly, and then she actually effing flaps them and actually like, freaking flies. Like the fact that God she damn, that's amazing. has to handcraft her wings. I also love her being like. I can only do it for five seconds. No fucking doubt you can only do it for five no. seconds. It's insane that you figured this out, girl. Fucking I wild. Love it moments like this. Moment, moment, moment. Like she's um, pushing her devil fruit to its limits, and I love it. And then the way that her and Frankie work together in tandem, he's got his arm anchored onto the side. They're flapping over there, and she's like, I'm only going to be able to hold it. And he's like, That's fine. And they get, over. Oh, God. It was so. <gasps> Someone's good. also pointing out it's her with Angel. Ring, wings which is perfect for someone whose title is devil child yeah the whole devil child thing just pisses me off oh you're a devil child for knowing things and having a brain at a young age and being born yeah, on... too bad get you know dumped what? on get genocide you know what get good bite next time Pick the... <laughs> that's what i have to say about that bite my uh, ass you it's time it's it. time for a devil's him. advocate uh, i'm gonna call this um akainu corner have you considered getting good next time scrub be born not evil there you go. What do you think of the argument? <laughs> I think you didn't like it. I think you didn't like the argument. <laughs> Can you remind me to poke you in the forehead uh, when we see each other for Christmas? Yeah, sure. 
<laughs> Just be born somewhere else, duh. Yeah. <laughs> a kind of corner is my new favorite segment where I try to try to see things from the other point of view. A kind of uh-huh. has been a kind of has been mentioned. We we talked about it on um, Long Ring Long Land, and also yeah, we did uh, Annie's Lobby. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> not being born evil. Also, is nothing has happened. So quit talking about things when nothing's happened. Oh, how to scare uh, I love, <laughs> I love Nami's. Um, I'm actually a man, and then making friends with the girl. I love their little friendship. I know it started in a rough place, but I love their little friendship. The rhino chick really wanting to be with Epsilon is questioning, questionable. What terrible has she taste. Seen him. Has she seen how much he sucks? I don't know, but whatever. I'm glad the whole thing happened. It was a great running gag. But you know what? One of my very favorite parts of this entire arc is, is uh, Usopp. (sighs) Yes, my boy. I genuinely tear up talking about this scene. Let's get into it. Okay, so Usopp's whole entire fight with Perona is absolute gold because Comedy, we are talking character, about, and action. It's all three. Yes. Because we are talking about um, a person who knows himself so well and who takes his weaknesses. And when her, when Perona's ghosts are making everyone else fall apart and it's such a problem for them and it's breaking them and it's making them despondent, Usopp being able to say, Nice try, Biatch. That's where Usopp lives. <laughs> You're literally in Usopp's house now. <laughs> and none of your tricks are going to work on me because this is where my strength is, baby. Um, <laughs> was the perfect, perfect thing for Oda to put right after he did the Usopp coming back onto the boat. Because when we have Usopp questioning who he is and questioning whether he's good enough for the crew to the point that he convinces himself that he should leave the crew and that he's never going to be at the same level as them. And then you have him going to Annie's lobby where he realizes, you know, he is an amazing sharpshooter. And is it, it was it Sanji or Zoro? Zoro who Sanji. told him Sanji to go and who do said, the things. I'm going to do what, I'm going to do the things I'm going to do, do what you I can do well. Yeah. You go do what you can do well. And so We have that, and then it moves into here, and it says now you have you have Usopp buying into his own personality and saying, "I do know that I have something that I can bring to the table, and I am going to use it." And so when that happens with Perona, and he manages to use all of his um, self loathing to his advantage i was just like that absolutely was the most amazing thing that you absolutely could have done at this point because you're we have to rebuild up usopp like it or not now that we've gone through this part where usopp pulled himself down and wondered if he was good enough for the crew as readers we start to wonder if he was good enough for the crew as well even if we'll say things like no he's absolutely he's perfect and he's this and that and he just doesn't believe in himself we need him to rebuild himself And so this was a spectacular way to do it because he's having this battle in his incredible drip. So he's being, he's bringing one of the greatest fits to the moment too, which makes it that much cooler, but he's having this battle and he's using the greatest strength of all his own self-loathing that how much better could that possibly have been? It was brilliant. And anyone without it can't beat Perona. Anyone who doesn't force themselves to go through the day where they feel like they can't accomplish anything could never beat Perona. It's only because of that that he's able to save the crew. And it's incredible. No, it's it's the best thing that could ever have happened. Uh, I also want to point out, there's a page in here in chapter 460 they normally do a thing with sanji where he gets you know big mean teeth and stuff um Mm -hmm. and he gets all crazy but in this one it felt like we were seeing something completely different that was giving us a clue on page four of 20 in chapter 460 if you want to have a look that feels so dragony it's ridiculous or demony but it it's trying to give (laughs) us clues all right. Um, a hundred percent. Somebody is worried about Laboon. If you think that I'm not going back there when oh, you know worry. my don't feelings worry. about Laboon, don't, don't worry. even worry. We're getting to Laboon. We're just, 
We need to get through everything first. else so we can deep dive on Brooke Laboon and Kuma. That's that's yeah, what we like, want to is sink a, our teeth into. That is its own thing, all in its own world. Yeah. And we'll talk a little ores in there too. But yeah, ores I was so proud of my main man Usopp I, and his taking down of Perona. But the part that gets me the most, like him being the only one that could do it is huge. The part that makes me tear up to think about is when he needs confidence, when he he's down anything, on- nothing's happened. Yeah. <laughs> when he's down on his luck, when he is struggling, when he feels like he's not strong enough and that even though he was the only one who could do this, he can't. He digs deep, realizing no one can save him, calling out for help anyways. And he's not calling out for one of the straw hats to turn back because he knows he can't. He calls to the lie he told himself to have the strength yeah. to fight when his friends needed him before. And he draws on the inner strength that he built up for himself, that he used to take on the world government without a crew. His, he was separate from his crew at that point and took on the world government to save Robin. And that strength comes out in the moment of save me, Sniper King, which is just so, this so is something good. That you and I talked about. And I said, the thing that I love about Usopp in this time when he is asking Sniper King to save him is that everyone has a strength mask that they put on in this. Like mm -hmm. Luffy gears up two and three and um, everyone has power levels and Usopp's power level is his own goddamn lie. And so yep. it, so I said to you, the thing that I love about this thing happening with Usopp, my thoughts and commands is that um, his lies are his strength. So he is using his ability to tell a tale to sell to himself that he is a stronger person inside and that somewhere inside of him lives a stronger version of Usopp. And so he, he believes in it and he puts that mask on as a, um, as a way of turning that part of him on and becoming better. And I was like, that is absolutely beautiful. Because everyone else already has this other view of themselves and this belief in himself. And Usopp puts on a mask and pulls out that character from inside of him. And then he lives his truth by living his lie. And I think that's freaking amazing. It's beautiful. I, that's such a good way to read it. I, I love it so much. It makes me so happy. I never thought that Usopp's pessimism would come in so handy. If it weren't for him, the entire crew might have been done for. Those are some really awful powers. Only the strange animal zombies are coming after us. Thank you, Usopp. And then this part. Horo, horo, since the beginning of Thriller Bark, not one person has escaped the effects of negative ghosts were out negative and it shows all the ga the ghosts laying on the ground bent over and crying <laughs> and then it goes i'm so sorry kuman see for everything listen all of you when it comes to thinking about things pessimistically no one can beat me he's so confident about his terrible character trait <laughs> ah, so good <laughs> So and good. Her starting to pity him to, to make him and trying to make him feel better so her powers will work is such a funny joke. Oh, it's so good. And he's like, don't try to don't try to lift up my spirits, it'll never work. <laughs> it's, so it's such a oh. fun bit. <laughs> it's, and it's so great because it's it plays so into Usopp's strength and shows it shows him that the crew is going to take all sorts of variety of talents in order to be able to be successful and to get to the end and to have everyone meet their life's mission and have a strong will. Like how amazing could that possibly be? Oh, your, your translation is doing laughs right now. Like it's actually translating them, right? Yes. Yes, it is. Okay. So you Thank know God. that this art has three laughs that I love in your, that was my best one so far. It's not great, but it's the best one. That was pretty uh, good. Hada, 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 hada. And? <laughs> Which, that's Who what Moria's laugh sounds like in the anime. No. Yes, Moria's laugh in the anime is... 
Ooh. You have to do push-ups, I think. <laughs> do I? People are saying, yeah. wow, that was spot on. Wow. Okay. Well, there you go then. <laughs> no, that is what it sounds like. All right. I'll be right back. <laughs> While you are doing push-ups, I'm going to move forward to One, see, uh, two, three. let's go into Brooke's fight with his own body, his own My boy. shadow. I gotta say, I am oh, loving the color grading on Koro. On Koro? Oh. Zoro. <laughs> I just said color, so I guess I was in that space. Um, oh. I'm just refreshing the page oh. so I can have a look at it. <laughs> oh, Greg, you're back. You missed nothing. Don't worry. Greg, nothing happened. <laughs> uh, oh, God, I forgot Hogback's laugh. I don't like Hogback's laugh. It's like, force, 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 force. Ooh. Yeah. Do that. What? <laughs> Too late. I did it. No. <laughs> Let's make it that a let's pretend that didn't happen. What? Speaking of last, Mama pointed out that Luffy she 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 refers to four as in death, but the alternate interpretation would be that laughing is she 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 as in lion. Interesting. Oh because lions bring death. No, I think I think that's just also a, a thing. I wanna say real quick, um I think this is our first time Zoro has been in an image that I've done. Oh my god, really? Yeah, we've done like I've three Sanji's and two before? Luffy's, but we've never done Zoro. We also haven't done Nami. Um, we've done one Robin. Wow. I, we've done like That's three crazy. Luffy's or something. But I think this is the first it's Zoro. Story, one. Zoro. You know, Zoro suffers from that thing, that good kid oh, syndrome. God. When you no, got... you're right. You're right. Shishi is lying because my favorite attack name that Zoro has in the anime is Shishi Shonson. I just the way he says it's so good. Sorry, what were you saying? Um, Zoro suffers from that thing when you're the really good kid in your family and you have a bunch of siblings and you're the one who like does things well and comes home on time and always does their work and helps out at home and you just get overlooked. Meanwhile, the parents are paying all this attention to the troublemakers and trying to bring them places and convince them to be good kids. And meanwhile, you're just standing there being Zoro, like, dude, I bring it every day. Why am I not in the picture? Why is it always these guys? Nami also almost made it on because the Luffy help moment was your second place. It's just, it couldn't, for Lady East Blue for you, it couldn't beat Mihawk and Shanks meeting. Yeah, it couldn't. Yeah, it, it just couldn't. Um, Chopper hasn't been on yet. Chopper doesn't have a lot of, like, steal-the-scene arc moments, unfortunately. When I choose my picture, I always say to Drock, like, he asks me usually to pick, like, two or three. This time, I had an idea of exactly what I wanted it to look like. Yeah, like an, the composition and everything. See, yeah, I said I would love it if I could see Kuma in the background, and he's pushing um, Luffy's pain out of him so that he can put it on to Zoro, and that Zoro is in his stance, and I wanted Zoro to be saying, Nothing happened. Yeah, I'm going to do big, cool text for that. The same way we did with yeah. The Hunter. Ugh, I love that one. That one has to be a t-shirt for me. It, it That should be. be merch. That should be merch for sure. Yeah, that one is so good. Um, it, And I was really happy that Brooke... We'll talk about Brooke's character Maybe later or whatever. Picture, and... But I kind of want to put some detailing in this one. We'll see how far I can get. Because I want to put a lot of work into this one. Yeah. I like Brooke... Um, fighting against himself and having the notch slash and and being in this huge huge fight but you know what made me so happy like don't let me forget this uh, let's make this a laboon moment actually okay we're going into laboon now yeah let's laboon let us because indeed. it's time because it's we're tough. fighting we're fighting with brooke and he's obsessed with his bloody afro and I think that's the time to laboon. So okay. it is time for my very favorite reveal. I think the laboon um, reveal might be <laughs> one of my favorite moments so far in like, this entire... It was like six years in the making or something between when laboon was first mentioned and when you meet Brooke. 
Holy shit, is it was it six years? I think it was something like That's that. That's pretty cool. I keep forgetting that because I'm zooming through and reading so I think many pages after we at talk a, time. a bit about Brooke. Oh my boy. Pets. The iceberg. Uh, we're not going to get to the corkboard today. This is like 50 chapters. Oh, there's so many chapters. We're going to have to corkboard next time. Oh my boy. But you we get will pets. have a little quirky talk. Oh, I love you, my boy. It is a Chekhov's gun. You're right. Um, so, mm-hmm. he's freaking out about his afro over and over again, and you're like, my God, man is spazzing. Mm-hmm. And then he says two things. Number one, he can't grow back his hair. He's dead. He doesn't have the ability to grow back his hair. And you're like, okay, right away, that makes sense that he would have this identifying feature that he wouldn't want to get rid of. But then when you find out that the second reason that he didn't want to have his hair cut off was because Laboon wouldn't recognize him. Oh my God. That was momentously crushing this yep. idea that he was like, I'm, I am obviously nothing like I used to be. We've got mm-hmm. my height. We've got my disposition, my ability to sing. But if Laboon is going to recognize anything and, and know that we lived up to our promise to come back and get him and to be with him again, it's going to be my afro. If you cut off my hair, then how will Laboon know who I am? And to think that that was his greatest concern was just gutting. And then it made all that time so much better. All his silliness about his hair suddenly became meaningful and poignant. So our editor Celio is loves loves Brooke so much, uh, and wrote a like a a summary of the tragedy of Brooke. Do you think this is a good time for for me to read it? That they wrote the piece. Go ahead. This is a great time to read it. Kaido Kaido did um, Nola and Cricket's uh, love is Brooke. Okay. Yeah. So this is from our editor Celio or Cricket Bones. Brooke is comedic to anyone who does not think about him, to anyone who does not care to read the cracks that carry on his bones. There are some troubling things that should be noted that I honestly think about sometimes. Thanks, Oda. Let's begin with loss. With the tragedy, with the creation of the man we know now. And what a creation. Brooke was not the same man we met, he states it himself. He started these games and jokes as an attempt to, on the surface, cheer himself up. But we hear him say that he is so glad to be alive. It was to keep himself a human, like all of us would do, away from the silence of the, uh, the silence of death, the same death that had wrecked those men, that family he had created. Humming Brook died, and Brook we know lives now in death amongst the present and past. We will never meet him as he was. It is an understatement to say the loss was great. Look at the size of the dining hall alone, and see how many coffins fill it up, and how many skulls are in each of those twelve coffins just skulls even with the skulls alone frankie mentions to brooke offhandedly so casually that mostly may miss it the weight is too much for the sunny to take the weight is too much for the sunny to take what about the man who killed those men no not in the way we think uh, but who chose to continue on the line instead of letting them heal or maybe simply guiding them on a diff- uh, uh, guiding them differently or choosing a different path who chose to fight after the crew's numbers had been sliced and without the usual familiar guidance who chose for them. That would be the vice captain, who admittedly was not ready to make those choices. He was wrong. Brooke carries that weight uh, weight now. As a stand-in captain, it falls on his head. If we agree with that fact or... uh, What? Sorry, I can't read today. If we agree with that fact or not, he sure does. How terrible it must feel to know you created widows, fatherless children, men you perhaps raised, souls you trained, and people you had adventures with and loved and lost with. Now reduced to skulls in a box, you yourself laid to bed. Men who will never have a home other than the earth you stand on and who do not have a home to return to anymore. People who will never know what happened to their family and without closure. Brooke has known his own bones longer than he's known his skin and flesh. He literally can remember himself dead longer than he can remember being alive and properly human. Picture trying to remember what your eye color used to be, but realizing you forgot years ago. Does Brooke remember the other crew's details? The way Yorkie had smile lines or... Names are hard. Ma Wari Tosuki's birthday was on the same week as his. Does he remember his own? 
Or did he pick a day he remembers better, the day he lost a partner? Yorkie, what would he think of him now? After the things he did, after the men on his shoulders, what would Yorkie ever think of him now? Perhaps Luffy reminds him of that golden smile. How about the fact that the man is treated like a grandfather when he died at 38 and was stuck in a time bubble for 50 years, stuck without the thing that age comes with, experience. It is a time capsule in silent hell. The idea of suddenly being flung into a new world like that is scary in its own right. However, the truthful problem would be the fact that you have lost one thing humans love so dear, familiarity. The pirate rookie you knew had grown up to be a king and died before you even found out, drifting alone for another decade. The fact that kings and kingdoms had fallen, perhaps, even the one he canonically came from before he was a pirate. Brooke has been stuck alone for longer than any other crew member has been alive. He was literally just found in a black, white, and gray hellscape. Luffy brought color to Brooke's pale white and ink in hell, allowing Brooke's own flower to finally blossom instead of being stuck in purgatory. But let's hope he can forgive his own sins. What colors will he bring forward in time? What a fun joke character Oda made for us. What a wonderful smile he brings. Let us hope it can become genuine as time rolls on and as the tide does. Onward, hopefully carrying them on. I think that's beautiful. Oh, God. Oh, I forgot to do something I should have done while I was reading that. Um, I want everybody pretend this was on screen while I read that. (laughs) It's a good bit. (laughs) What was supposed to be on screen? I don't see anything. Uh, The Mary. How dare you. Why do you do that? <laughs> hey, Celio, don't apologize. That was beautiful. I I loved that. Even if I struggled to read it. <laughs> I, I'm at, Sometimes you're having an off day and reading words is harder than it should be. You're, I'm not going to lie. I think you should be sorry. That was crushing. <laughs> Celio should be sorry? Yeah, that was crushing. We don't apologize on this <laughs> channel, Celio. It's okay. You don't have to. You're part of the team. You don't have to apologize, though. <laughs> <laughs> so that that's horrible. Thanks for that. Oh, the, I, the I, Mary I like should it. be an emo. <laughs> the Mary should be an emo. Mm. I'd be a great emo. Uh, All right. Yeah. So that's on with um, the show and the jokes. So that's Cricket's beautiful thoughts. So you're going to have a pain editing that from all the misspeaks. I'm sorry. That's Cricket's beautiful thoughts on Brooke's tragedy and how deeply impactful it is. <laughs> don't, see, you don't have to apologize. This is One Piece. We're here for trauma. Oh, God. Okay, so yeah. the reason why it also becomes so difficult is because we're sitting here and we get to hear the entire backstory about how Laboon had been separated from his pod and he had followed them and how they knew how dangerous it was and how Laboon would always join in on the songs and and how they took care of him, but then they realized they just couldn't take him any further. And thank God not, because they sure they adventured hard, but they adventured dead. Um, and like Laboon now could sink that boat before those poison archers did shit. Laboon then was a baby whale. He was just a tiny baby whale. It had to happen, but this is the part your friend is a whale. That's right. I can't shake off the feeling that he still thinks of us. He may even still believe that we're going to return playing our usual cheerful music. I don't think he'll forgive us for dying so irresponsibly. And that's a fair thing to say. P.S. I really think that it was irresponsibly. Mm -hmm. I didn't at first, but after watching and listening and then listening to your thing as well, cricket, I, I thought like, yeah, absolutely. There was irresponsibility in this death, but after coercing him into agreeing to such a selfish act, one that we ended up being unable to fulfill in this faraway place. I just, I can't just die hoping to be forgiven because when a man promises to return, he must return. That's amazing. It's, it's and then beautiful. they're all like, Laboon? Laboon? Oh, no. It's no mountain, it's a whale. I was just 
Yeah. I love Laboon so much. <laughs> ah. And knowing that Le someone from Laboon's crew is out there and still loves him and it, and wants nothing in the world more than to finish his journey and f deliver on his promise and come back. We're not even in the final god dang song and I'm already Yo wazzing in between cricket stuff Yo and uh <laughs> Uh, okay. So someone pointed out you get a purple mushroom right now because you said Laboon was Roger's whale. That ain't Roger's whale. That that whale didn't know Roger. Well, actually, probably met him because he was hanging out when Roger entered the Grand Line. Yeah, it doesn't matter. I said a whole bunch of different things about Laboon. You, I've you told get, you before. You, you, you get a I mushroom should. though. We have to point it out. Yeah. Yeah. I don't care. Give me my <laughs> mushroom. You get it. You're there. Um, it's yours. You know what? You know what? It. It's such a good. Mu this mushroom is so good. Yeah. I'm going to take out my smoked salt uh -huh. and I'm going to put my smoked salt good. on this mushroom. I'm glad you're enjoying your mushroom. Enjoy it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Oh. <laughs> so <That's> upsetting. <laughs> Oh my god, that's so funny. I just talked about my smoke salt. I turned the page and it's like, this is my special zombie death salt. Damn, can your smoke salt <laughs> kill zombies? You betcha. Fuck yeah. Someone said the bubble should be opaque and I at my, I was planning translucent, but I'm going to try out opaque because it sounds like it might be cool with the, with the font. I actually really like... Yeah... Okay, again, on page six of chapter 460, everyone's face is normal, except for my good friend Sanji, whose cigarette is smoking in a way it shouldn't smoke, and apparently whose eyeballs smoke now. <laughs> you know, sometimes uh, you get real passionate. Yeah, you know what, Sanji? I see you, and I want you to know I see you. Sure I you know do. that you were done dirty, but I see you. It's really funny... Um, because I somehow, I just blame Oda for Sanji sucking, um, in a very interesting way. Instead of Sanji. Yeah. You know what? <laughs> Fair enough. You, you want like, to still like Sanji. About that. Yeah. I see you, Sanji. It's okay, buddy. I see you. Interesting. There's something very sad about oars i feel really sad about oars the great the continent polar makes... ancient giant who we'll never meet because he was long dead yeah i'm glad we're not going to meet him as him but there's something really sad about his character i question what happened to him and how he became such a great bad boy i like it though because i like finding out that there's all sorts of different types of giants all over the world mm. and that some of them are not going to be good kids who do yeah. good things we're gonna have some bad boys too ors ors is so much bigger than the other giants we've met too like he's kind of ridiculously so you're kind of wondering now like okay where uh no i got ten thousand, and it asked me if i wanted to delete your art <laughs> isn't that crazy it's like telling you it's like delete your art. I was like, calm down. Mm -hmm. Holy! His t title having been continent polar is wild. Like, first of all, there are con. I, I thought there was only one continent. How do you get that title? Yeah. Next arc, Mama. I don't know why, but Peladin Berserker really feels like next arc. I'm gonna want to delete some of your art. Uh oh! I think someone's wanting you to wait for. One person wanted you to wait for the halfway point to do it. To delete your art? Yeah. Hmm. So, uh, do you do you know the pitch your daughter made about um, a stream that she could be on? What was it? Uh, it would be a thing for her, and my wife has suggested that you save delete your art so that you can abort a bad drawing that chat might f make me do for her if it looks like a drawing might be bad you you can save your points to have an eject button to save her okay what however i think you should use it for you <laughs> what was the arc she was hoping to be on i don't know not for one piece a non one piece stream oh okay yeah oh i see yeah she might need help but i like to delete 
I, I want to yeah. be able to delete something here. Right now? No. Oh, on now. this stream, on Mom Piece. I understand. All right, let's keep moving. On, in chapter 464, once again, page 3 of 21, I'm starting to wonder if he's revealing so many things about Sanji in this arc through his choice of um, art and through the way that he's drawing him that I'm actually starting to wonder if he made a distraction in making Sanji suck so bad <clears throat> so that his character reveal wouldn't be as obvious, but he was putting it in there. Holy shit. What's wild is the other terrible Sanji moment happens in an arc where other evidence came up that caused Sanji predictions to happen, and I find that funny. No, I think that... I we'll think get there when we it. get there, but that that is interesting because of I really think it that happens he gave again. Some Sanji revealing here. Sorry, that's a not a spoiler. You look, but whatever. I've I've told you um, a few different pages, but then again, if you're reading along with me and you look at page three of twenty one in chapter four sixty four, the bottom panel, okay, you can't tell me that isn't a completely different way of drawing Sanji, and it also reveals kind of a character change or a man within a man that is a non-spoiler so, counter for sure the first one in a long time and, but i feel like that's what that is interesting to note and he does it um it could be he does it as he's saying a super gross thing it's when he's saying that's right you've stolen one of my dreams <laughs> so it's really it's really interesting that as he's doing the gross thing that feels like there's a reveal of his character behind the character. But I'm not going to go back into that because I feel gross and now I have to look at post Sanji and it just doesn't, uh, it doesn't add up, you know, like it doesn't add up. And so it's been on page three I mean, of 20 a couple of times. The, the good thing to think about here is maybe that was a dream Sanji had, but one of those like fantasy things and not something he actually would have done. Like it's a thing he likes to think about. Also, the way that Oda wrote me also has him saying like he knows how he fights because he knows how he would have fought in that. Like it yeah, implies. Yeah, I mean, you can think a, about something and and not do it in real life. It implies such a greater form of thinking. You know what I mean? It look there. I'm trying to salvage it slightly. There's not a great way for things to come across with this. This person wants me to be a mama Jim, where I just suddenly make you delete as you're putting your drock thing on. That'd be hilarious. That's very funny. <laughs> no, you'd just be into it. What what some people don't know, Drock lives for chaos. Chaos and Loves unique it. forms of suffering. Only Loves unique forms of suffering, them. not suffering in Only general. Only unique, though. He doesn't like he doesn't like things to be if I really wanted to be run of the mill, I would just let him draw a bunch and then just randomly delete it for, for I think this would be a good time to delete, and he'd be like, gross. <laughs> yeah uh mundane suffering is the worst yeah no gross um Warp world is a good spell for that exact reason I, i've been debating whether or not i'm rude enough to put warp world in my treasure deck jahira treasure so the treasures don't even get sacked so you got a pile of them sorry someone brought up magic and i needed to <clears throat> okay we're back brain is back <laughs> you really went on a little journey there you know <gasps> pirate docking pirate docking is great because frankie proposed turning into the reusion and here's 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 something very important your numbers don't need to add up exactly your numbers for the reusion don't need to add up exactly because one straw hat isn't going to participate because it's demeaning as a human being <laughs> <laughs> yes Oh, I a the joke was hilarious. Fucking so somebody funny. mentioned it. <laughs> someone mentioned it earlier, but I was wanting to wait till we got later. That joke was immaculate. Up, so. <laughs> and then I was like, "Well, maybe you could still have a reunion, but she would be like, i 'I'm not participating.' I in think that. it, That's especially especially if I'm right and Wapples fruit is how the reunion happens. I think Robin wouldn't. <laughs> She'd just go. That's demeaning as a human being and not step in his mouth." Oh my god, no. I don't want But she Waffle wouldn't. You coming. have to admit that she wouldn't, right? No, she wouldn't. When you say that, now I worry that um 
Wapple is coming back as a good guy. You don't have a to be a good guy to help the Straw Hats. Partner. A Wapple work could with? never be a good guy. He's bad. You know what I mean? A work with. Ugh. Gross. Um, but, I'm but with isn't... the crew. The fight they had with Oars was one of the craziest fights we've seen. And it was like, a group thing... fight. We saw the Straw Hats team up. We never see that. Yes. It was one of the craziest, coolest fights we've ever seen. Having it be a group fight where we all got to fight one creature was oh immaculate. God. Yes. It was like, we got to see so many cool, like not even pirate docking, although pirate <laughs> It's so funny. Pirate talking is one of the most insane freaking ideas that have ever crossed the face of the it's earth. It's demeaning and it as feels... a human being stands to be one of my favorite jokes of all time. It's... Well, because when I read pirate docking, I was like, this feels icky. I can't put my finger on it, but it feels icky. And then Robin goes, that's demeaning as a human being. And I was like, <laughs> I'm with you, Robin. It's so funny. <laughs> and I couldn't even like put my finger on why, but I was like, she's not wrong. So <laughs> it was amazing. But getting to see the whole crew fight together is absolutely fantastic. There's something really incredible about mm -hmm. um, getting to see them work as a team and having those pirates come out of the woods and working with Luffy and then shoving all the different shadows inside just him. Like, you seem tough. Yeah, like we've seen you and you seem like the kind of person who is going to do this and this. And so we're going to, yes, this, the carpentry on the stairs is amazing, especially for somebody who's a shipwright. Hey. Yeah, because shipwright, well, no, he's a carpenter, remember? Not a shipwright. Very specific. Don't even, don't even start me. Shipwrights can do all sorts of things. Um, but we saw so many great times in here and sh at Shadow Luffy shoving all the things inside okay, of Luffy yeah. and having Luffy what do you, hold what this do you think fight of inside your, of him. What do you think of the newest Luffy transformation, Nightmare Luffy? <laughs> Nightmare Luffy. What chapter is Nightmare Luffy in? Are you talking about new Luffy with shadows? No, Luffy with the shadows um, was called in most translations Nightmare Luffy as his, as the transformation name. Oh, I've been calling him Shadow Luffy. Oh, okay. Yeah, Nightmare Luffy was what I saw. I don't know if it, if the, yeah, I, I don't know what Nightmare translations Luffy. were different. But yeah, Nightmare I Luffy. I say things the way I want to. Um. Okay. I think yeah. he was incredible. He's blue when they shove him full of shadows, because I didn't yeah. read the colored version. Oh, yeah, you didn't. But yeah, did you see the cover? Because he's blue on the cover also. Yeah. Okay. Well, he's blue. I'm going to have to go to my colored version and actually look at him. Yeah. Nightmare um, Luffy, but blue. This was incredible. So we talk about it all the time. Oda loves a walk up. I, I swear to God, Oda saw a powerful walk up as a kid and was just like, <laughs> from now on, I'm going to write in my own great good walk ups because he loves, that man loves himself a walk up. But he has this one that I, Oh, so good. What's his name? Uh, I think it was Roast. No, it ends with an S. Hughes, you're getting further away. Oso, wait, you're almost there. It's Ors, that's it. I'm so sorry. I'm just too injured. Yeah, you can't help it. Can you move a bit, though, and stay out of harm's way? Hey, Ors, if it's true that Luffy's shadow is in you, then you better not underestimate the true power of your own crew. And then they do their walk-up. And Zoro does that Zoroing. Oh God! Every time Zoro ties <laughs> his freaking scarf around his head, I just am like, Oh it's my so God! Good. It's you are so, so cool good. right now. You are so cool right now. I can barely handle it. Your coolness level is making me feel like too full of cool energy. It's rubbing off on everyone. And Sanji scratching the back of his head, smoking up. We got Chopper, one of his ultimate forms. And then freaking Frankie bringing the two pillars together with the bloody chain in between Making them. Like giant ass nunchucks out of pillars. Oh. Shut up. That's so it's good. So good. So good. And then Robin, way too sexy to be fighting in this in this outfit, but so cool. <laughs> and freaking 
freaking Usopp wearing one of the coolest outfits in the world with his amazing weapon. Like, this yep. is a great walk up. Da -da yep. Oh, so good. I, I was down. When we got to see the crew fight as a group, no, 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 I was just. You'll see why this font. You'll see why this font. We'll do it. We'll do a serious font for if, if if this doesn't work, but you'll see why it has to be this font. Okay. Okay. What? Oh, because people are worried that it doesn't no, no, give the serious. Like, this is a weird choice of font, but don't worry, don't worry. If if this works, there's a reason it had to Trust be this one. Process. If it doesn't work, Trust. then Trust I'm going to do a serious font and put the font different elsewhere. The font is hard to read. That's because people can't read cursive writing as well. No, I mean it's not cursive; it's, it's just curly. But it's uh, cursive adjacent. Look, look, it's an aesthetic piece. It doesn't. It's not a comic. It doesn't need to be easy to read. Listen to me when I tell you, I don't care. Okay, cool. but I might use ten thousand points to delete it. <laughs> oh God, the threat looming over is so much worse than it actually happening. Like unironically way harder to deal with the just looming threat than it is it actually happening and just doing it i agree i agree yeah a hundred thousand percent that's why i love it so yeah. much yeah yeah my boy come here you get to be petted um i also love that we get to see ors fight when he's still so loofy getting to see this ginormous thing be dorky makes this incredible just so good the drawing will live in the video forever so is there really a point in deleting it dude yeah because i have to redo it that's it, it punishes me and makes me redo it that's why there's a point in redoing in uh deleting it yeah it's amazing but i think i like it has gotten this better art so far both the times i've had to do it I, I came out the other side making it better yeah and one time you deleted hard oh yeah no the sanji one yeah. we basically started from scratch it was well, phenomenal. The second Jordan. Sanji one. Sanji's had two of these. I'm I wonder what character's going to have the most at the end of this. You know what? I'm not going to lie to you. I would wear this shirt and then the Hunter shirt side by side all the time. Okay. Okay. I love that we get Luffy's goofy character inside of Oars. So he does things like butt stomp. And then they're like, Luffy yep. doesn't do that. But I was thinking, you're kind of wrong, guys, because it feels very butt stomp. -y. That's not a very, that's not a specific move Luffy does, but that is something Luffy would do if he were a giant. Yeah. This person, Mama, you're so true. I write in cursive and people, I can write on cursive on my board in my classroom and kids, I might as well write in Greek, but there's always one kid who messes with you and knows how to write it. So I could write down. Kids are big weirdos and are ruining the world. And then everybody would be like, what does that say? And one kid would be like, hey. <laughs> I got to tell you, the region of the pirate docking six, that is not what I'm thinking of. When I'm thinking of it, I want you to know I'm not thinking of their pirate docking. And I'll let you know, I'm thinking of Wapple eating them now. I know you are. He can it's, fuse people together. Unless we get a specific fusion fruit, that's the option you've got. And then what happens? They stay docked together forever? No. No, Ooh. he just, it probably wears off or maybe he has to eat them again and then spit he them out as all of them. them. Or he eats them again and then spits them out differently? Yeah, he eats them, eats them again and spits them out all separate. No, that's embarrassing as a human being. I mean, yeah, which is why Robin won't be part of it. Robin won't be part of the reunion. That is the thing I don't want. I don't I want mean, to see it. I'm not into whoops. it. Whoops, whoops, whoops. It's okay. It's okay, everybody. It's okay, everybody. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Everything's it's good. I'm going to make writing cursive until year eight. Good. You should be glad. You're going to be able to read crap that was in cursive. You know what? I'm, gonna I, I think there's no need for it anymore. I think we can give up on cursive. This person, Mama, if you think the reusion is going to look cool and not all goofy, you might as well eat a mushroom right now. <laughs> Honestly, yeah. You you know whose manga you're lie. on. You know whose wild ride you've joined. That's, that's not a lie. You are saying true facts. <laughs> okay. We We get Luffy filled with shadows coming to fight and 
the the fact that he got pulled aside but that crew had been hiding out and waiting for their opportunity to have somebody that they could shove them in and that loopy was like you know what that sounds good shove me full of shadows i'm into it was incredible and the fight with oars was amazing it was oda had to let people bitch for a full two pages about how unfair it is that they beat them and then had to go and fight, um, had to go and fight against Kuma again because it was. It felt like such a punch to the groin to go through this entire freaking thing. Have Luffy pick up, yeah, Luffy fighting with a sword, Luffy taking on the characteristics of all of these different people and having this absolutely incredible fight. All of the people coming together, our entire crew fighting as a unit absolutely decimating the the castle that they were on in the battle and then boom kuma i was like no oh my An- god another no. warlord after all of that the, to to have you coming here and then to have you insulting my crew i expected more from you blackfoot sanji you know what kuma i expected you to shut your stupid mouth <laughs> Like, shut your whole cake hole, you bugger. That's all I have to say about that. Damn. Um, I was Tell so mad. Feel. Mm, I feel very mad. So I've been thinking about his Bible. Hey, yeah. who said hey? Why are you saying hey? What I hey? Kuma is great. Hey, Kuma is great. Eh, yeah, I'm sorry that I use such strong words, everyone. Such strong strong words it did feel like a real slap in the face though that we immediately went from such an incredible fight so it was a really good thing that he spent some time letting every single person on the island talk about how upset they were about this fight existing again i have ideas now about kuma you do you've done a lot of deduction about our about our good friend kuma yeah can I skip there? Uh, I don't see why not. Like we we have never gone less in order. We skipped the hogback fight. We kind of glossed over Luffy's shadow being taken. Like this is the least point by point we've done. But I think also these videos are more reviews than recaps, so I think it's fine to bounce around a little. Yeah. So this one, I think we had to bounce around a lot because we're talking about something that has um, so many chapters in this arc that if I was going to get to do it. Per- properly and so i find this frustrating sometimes because when we're doing an arc this big i can't yep. really do a bunch of cork boarding on it i can't yep. just dig in and go slowly through it boarding has to I'm be really, saved for the smaller ones yeah and i'm really excited for that because cork boarding i mean i live in the board of cork um True. and and so i i can't wait to go back into some cork boarding but i'm also excited for when we get to be up to date together and I get to do like a chapter at a time. I mean, God help the man. If he hasn't revealed the one piece by then, I'm going to eat that crap alive. I'm going to, I'm going to take, if I only have one chapter to go through, oh, I'm going to dig in in a way that you didn't even know was possible. I'll be like, Hell get yeah. out my mic, oh, baby. Here we go. <laughs> um, no blood for Luffy. Eh, eh, we'll see that. That is very 1960s scuba doo and I like it. Well, we're we're figuring it out bit by bit here. Yeah, I'm loving where you're going with this. It's time for Kuma. It is. Kuma's shirt is making me think some things. Okay. A lot of things about Kuma are making you think some things. What do you mean? Like, like there's a lot of factors about about Kuma you're thinking about, right? Yeah. So I'm just going to start with Kuma's shirt. So Kuma's shirt is kind of similar to the way that we are doing um, the four great kids. Uh, who the four I'm great kids? Are, yeah. Who I'm saying are, we know about red hair shanks and we know about white beard. Was I told the other one? Uh, there's another two you don't know of the four great no, kids. As we now know that I am, that dragon is not part of that world. Yes. Um, and so Kuma's shirt is making me think like it's kind of divided up in the four great powers and he's wearing it on his shirt. The idea that their continuous powers move around the world. 
which makes sense when you find out that Kuma is um, partially a government creation mm -hmm. because the government using a similar symbol to the own their own symbol, but in reverse, because in the government symbol, you've got the center circle, and then you have- Oh, it said, um, this arc mentions line. Kaido. This arc mentions one of the emperors, Kaido, is who defeated Moria originally and made him lose his will to fight. Yeah, I saw that. That's why I just said to you, am I missing one of them? Yeah, there one is them? one. It, Kaido is one of the is ones we know. Thank you. Watch your ass, Kaido. You're on my radar now. It's sticking you right over here. And now, Kaido, I'm going to use the oversized pin to pin you on the board. When I say oversized pin, folks, I want you to imagine it's a push pin, but it's about 80 times bigger than a regular push pin. Um, so Kuma's shirt is kind of almost the exact same symbol as the government symbol, only we don't see the end of the circles. Um, when they branch yeah. out on all the side, which I think is a really interesting thing, especially that we know that he is um, a government creation. Okay. Mm okay. -hmm. Kuma having the Bible in his hand. Yep. I think is going to become incredibly important. I don't think it's the religion in the same way that religion is. So I'm starting I, to think of it as this. I, okay. What? I just want you to know. Someone came up with a great joke in chat, and I'm going to steal it. Uh, keep going. No, say it. I refuse. Well, no, 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 no. I need, I'm going to, I guess we said in response, so you have to keep going. I just want you to know when it happens. It wasn't my joke is all. All right. Pre-crediting, pre-crediting chat. Okay. Here we go. Um, Kudo having the Bible, Kudo having the Bible in his hand is, I think... I'm starting to feel like he has some otherworldly power from our secret friend, the Shadow of Darkness, um, okay. who would who would be inside of the government. And so, whether he knows it or not, and he might, I think that he no, I think Kuma has um, is being aided in some way by this strength, by this otherworldly strength, and this shadow. And it's interesting because it feels like the Bible is a contradiction, but I'm starting to see that the Bible might be like a source of power piece. I have not played with the Bible ideas at all. What I have played with is that we don't know what his fruit is here, right? Like no. I've gone all oh, no, we, uh, Kuma's fruit, we know it's the pawpaw fruit. He's a pawpaw. No, man. but we don't know all of its powers. We just know that it's a pawpaw fruit. Right? Yeah, we know he says it can push anything. That's what he explains. Yeah, so he sees it as a pushing kind of fruit. But it feels to me like um, like he's able to... It feels a lot like the moment when Zoro was able to see where every single thing was. Okay. And he was able to look between the particles. And he could... He said, I can see through to the things that are underneath. I can see every part that a rock is made up of. I can mm -hmm. feel where everything is. So it feels a lot like that, but jacked up like it's on, um, like it's on steroids. And so it, the, his ability to push through, he's not just pushing through when he pushes out the energy inside Luffy, which doesn't even make sense. Like how is he seeing the energy inside of Luffy to be able to push that out? So okay. it almost feels like it, like it is a mantra or something and that he is able to see through Luffy to find the parts of Luffy that are, that are the pain, that he can discern different things. Like if he wanted to, he could push out Luffy's blood or he could push out the pain or he could push out anything else. So it feels like a type of mantra, but jacked up, if that makes sense. That he the other see thing what is pushed out. Okay. Yeah, so that he can differentiate all the push. So it feels like the mantra within him isn't from his pawpaw fruit, but it feels like the pawpaw fruit works in conjunction with his incredible personal mantra or his um his skills. 
there's something in there that I haven't fully flushed out with him. Also, for sure, dude, I think worked with, I think he worked with Dragon. Okay. So And explain it. So show I think work. that, show your work. Um, oh my I God. That, <gasps> I've just realized a huge font I have access to for jokes. I could, I could just say teacher shit. I can say school, school and teacher shit. Oh, how yeah, have I not been pulling on this? A whole area that you could have been using oh, all this time. Wow. I have to feel sad for you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's no, not my job to give you tools to say things. No, no. Like yeah. we, we're in it now. We got it now. That, that's what matters. All right. Keep going. Keep going. <laughs> Bronco, you need to know that I'm not going to put respect on anyone's name. It comes along when it comes along. Puma and I are Sir Crocodile Face. Chats. Sir Crocodile Face? No, that's just a crocodile face. You have um, called him Sir Crocodile Face. Eventually. Okay, yeah. never mind. This is cooler. I like the opaque, but this is cooler. Look how sick this looks. Yeah, that is really cool. I can't see the nothing happened, though. No, okay, no, it's so, supposed to be subtle, but I'm going to make it slightly less so. We're getting there. I want to talk about. Um, Kuma. Yeah. And Kuma and his... revolutionaries. So here's what I was thinking. Is Kuma, did Kuma work with um, Dragon or did Dragon work with Kuma? Because that's the question that you got to ask yourself. Was Kuma a revolutionary or was Dragon working for the government? Because they know each other. The fact that Kuma stands there after, because when you're listening to Zoro say to him, I will, um, let, if you need a head, take mine. You know, I have a huge bounty. I'm not as much as, as um, Luffy is right now. But when you think about the fact that I am, was intending to be the greatest swords person in the world, I'm still a real catch, right? So Zoro makes this, he makes this whole plea take my head instead of Luffy's. And yeah, absolutely honorable. I'm not saying it's not at all. It is incredible, but it doesn't seem like it should be enough for Kuma to then um, decide that he is going to not kill Luffy when he was directly told by the government that he had to create him. He's called a pacifista, um, so he is built by the government for a specific thing. And they said, kill Luffy, kill the crew. No one can be alive who knows what happens there. Because if we find out how easy it is to take down one of the seven, and we've already taken another one of the seven down, you're going to rattle the entire system. And so it shouldn't be enough. But he says, I am the government's human weapon, but I'm not yet complete. So a pacifista, in my opinion... I don't know who it is, but somebody has the ability to give. What is it that we call the other one? It starts with an H, um, not mantra, what? but hockey. Hockey. Um, that somebody has the ability to give hockey um, to to um, their warriors, somebody in the government, and that Kuma is full of hockey, and he is a and mantra, honestly, and that he that is part of the change that's going to happen with this doc that this doctor that he is building this thing and to call him a pacifista like could that be any more ironic by the way love that, that for the us. super weapon cyborg is called a pacifista yeah like ridiculous um and so it's really incredible this idea then i was created by the world government's resident genius dr vegapunk he possesses the world's most brilliant mind blah 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 so when he tells them let's make this compromise and I'll give you my head. It, he says, um, the way I see it here, Sanji tries to take over. And I appreciate that Sanji. That was really nice of you. Uh, especially since you did a really bad thing earlier, but it wasn't necessarily yours. Of um, course. That if I kill you now, if I lay a hand on the straw hat, Luffy, after this, I'll be put to shame. Mm, it was questionable. I've shown you that I'm out of my word. Now it's your turn. I think that it was questionable that he gave him enough of a reason to not attack Luffy after he was given a direct order from the government who is creating him. 
And so for that reason, when I was watching this, and then he takes all of the pain out of Luffy, why is he removing the pain and suffering from Luffy to give it to Zoro? I don't know. I don't know if if that was a real good oh, enough reason. So you're saying not only is it a test for Zoro, but it could also be to save Luffy and give him a better chance of survival. Yes. So honestly, Luffy just had um, over a hundred shadows shoved inside of him, went through this incredible battle, absolutely was annihilated by this and is passed out cold. And then here we have Kuma suddenly take all the pain and suffering from Luffy when he was told to kill him. That feels a little bit too much of a oh. opportunity so, to save him rather than kill him. So that combined so with him says, talking to himself, talking to Dragon, you exactly. think means that he has a connection to Dragon and owes him something. Exactly. Especially so then because he gets he to the end a, and he Dragon. says to him, yeah. fine, here's a little bit of um, Luffy's pain and you're about to have it all and it's probably going to kill you. If you truly are taking his, pace, his place, then you must accept his agony. You are near death yourself and it will be impossible for you to withstand and you will die. So when I saw that, I was like, come on, my friend. He needs to take the pain and suffering out of Luffy for Luffy to live. <laughs> and why would he ever in God's green earth do that when he was directly told to kill him? Just because Zoro said that he should take his place? No, that's not enough reason. You're not losing face for that. So... Then when he says in the next place, and Zoro asked to be moved, um, he says one thing, just let me change the location, which was brilliant. Like, what a Zoro thing to say. And this is why Zoro, I'm just going to cut to the chase. Zoro's number one today on the Yeah, chart. no, he come on. Is. It's Thriller Bark. He stole the entire, he yeah. did, He's, he was with kind question, of. question, the man is at the top of the charts. He was like kind um, of fighting for fourth or fifth this arc, I feel like, until Kuma's whole shit and then just steals 100%, everything. 100%. 100%. So then when he's sitting there and Zoro asks to be changed location so nobody will see him in his suffering when nothing happens. And then Kuma says, out loud, to passed out Luffy, you have exceptional friends. And then he says out loud, he's your son after all, Dragon. It made me feel like Kuma and Dragon had to have been exceptional friends. They had to have been exceptional right. friends. At the very least, because Kuma needs firsthand experience with what friendship means to Dragon, and being his close friend would be the easiest way to have that firsthand experience. 100%, but it makes me feel like the two of them know each other very well, because why would yeah. he talk to Dragon standing on the edge of this frickin' place and have this conversation out loud unless he and Dragon had enough of a history together that he would have a reason to talk to Dragon out loud yeah, when he met his son? That was my read on it for sure. That was yeah. that was how I and, read it on first time reading. And took away his son's pain. P.S. His son's yep. pain and suffering when what he was supposed to be doing was, was killing, killing him. him. So it felt to me like Kuma was actually intentionally rescuing Luffy and was using his powers to strengthen Luffy's healing time. And then for him to have an incredible crew who respected him made him say to himself that he was worth um, saving and that he was as exceptional as his father. Then it made me think, okay, if they knew each other, then in my opinion, it feels like Dragon would have had to have worked for the government. Because right. I, th I think that Dragon, it makes sense when Dragon's father is in the Navy and when Kuma is with the government and, and um, they were such good friends that kuma would have had to have dragon would have had to have worked for the government in order for them to have been together and then dragon had to find out information that he shouldn't have known that he found out that he was high enough up that he got and that it was such great um information that he was absolutely disgusted with the government and he said f this and he left the government even though he and kuma were great friends to start a revolution because he knew the truth now and once he knew some of the truth, and now he talks about how he is holding the truth and how the whole world wants the truth. And once he saw some of the truth and what was happening with inside the government, be it that he understood that there was a shadow of darkness, be it that he understood about the missing years, pet the boy, or whatever else it might be, 
that he would have had to have left, but I think that he and Dragon worked together. The mm -hmm. other side of the coin could be that Dragon was a revolutionary, et cetera, et cetera, or sorry, sorry, Akuma, and that he got injured and then was rebuilt by the government. But I think part of the factor here is that Kuma was already a strong person, already had exceptional abilities, and that the government has slowly been working on him behind the scenes with Dr. Uh, what's his name? Verapunk? Para Vera Vera? Dr. Pardon? Vegapunk. Vegapunk, which reminds me of your one of your poems. So I think that um, it could be possible that he got very injured or something similar to the way that it happened with Frankie and that they rebuilt him. But I think that he's been rebuilt in a way where they're using um, hockey, uh, hockey or mantra to strengthen him because he's something beyond... Um, steel because we know that Zoro is able to cut through steel he can cut through a bloody train so he's also made of something that we haven't seen yet the material that is being made for Kuma is a very different material I think it, is it being strengthened by him himself is he able to push out weakness I don't know when he That's says he's cool. able to push out anything is some of the thing that he's able to push out himself um, weakness and he can differentiate in his own body the things that would make him less strong red potato keeps making questions uh it keeps prompting uh, red us. potato you missed nothing nothing happened yeah they, they're keeps they keep coming up with all sorts of different prompts also real quick i wanted to say someone a while ago asked if i'd made uh thumbnail art for any one piece youtubers and that they said i have some of their favorite one piece art in the community first of all incredibly thankful that's so nice of you to say second of all i like doing art for me my thought has been I would love to do a stream where I talk to a One Piece YouTuber and give them the art I do while talking to them to use for a thumbnail. Like I do fan art of their favorite character while we talk and they can use it for whatever. Um, but as far as like work for hire, I think the only thing I'm interested in is if someone has like an RPG or a video game project I'm passionate about, I do work for it. Otherwise, art works for me. That's that's why I'm streaming because I like to do it for me, baby. All right. That's all. Um, also, I don't know if we would be able, like we talked about it, are we able to have merch that has characters from another thing People on get it? away with it. We'd have to look into exactly how they do that. Oh, chatting with Tekking sounds very fun. <laughs> Grand Line Review okay. is my probably my favorite One Piece YouTuber, even though I have some qualms with him, and uh, I think he has caused a false reputation for a couple of my favorite characters. But overall, probably my favorite. Awesome. Um, also rude. I'm your mom. What? what? Yeah, sorry. I, uh, or I feel like it's unfair if I'm listing favorites to put us on the list. I'm I didn't say mom. Murph because I think of Murph as like a book YouTuber who does a lot of One Piece content, which I know is a weird distinction to make, but. Okay. For Christmas, maybe you, th you should think I'm one of your favorite. All right. You're my favorite now for Christmas. Thank you. <laughs> Mugiwara no Goofy is great, but not only that, Mugiwara no Goofy bugs me because I had had the exact idea to do exactly what he was doing for videos for a long time and just didn't do it because it didn't feel like a type of comedy that I could do well. Like it didn't seem like my kind of comedy. And then he did it and I was like, ah, this fucker took my idea. But it's an idea I chose not to do, so I can't be mad. But there's like this weird little irksome of like, I absolutely had this exact idea. He uses so many of the same jokes I'd thought up. I didn't post them anywhere. He didn't actually steal them, but I'd thought of so many of the same jokes he uses and I keep being like, I was going to say that. No, That's I couldn't funny. pull it off as well. Like, look, look, cats just in space. I'm perfectly funny. I'm aware that that's not my kind of comedy, which is why I didn't make it. <laughs> the um, wrong Kihota Dill said, wanted to know my thoughts about them saying, with your strength, you'll just die anyways if you continue on your voyage. You're not fit for the new world. It seems like you have a couple of good underlings, but you'll lose them all. Do you know why I was like you once, trusting in my famous and talented crew, but I concluded long ago it wasn't enough. I, um, yeah, I loved that because um, to me, it just highlighted how much better Luffy is because I wanted to say that for you, absolutely, because Luffy has a unique talent that other people don't have. And it's something that we mentioned earlier where he's able to flip flop back and forth and he's able to be the straight man through non-knowledge and he's able to be 
um, the funny guy without knowing it. Um, Luffy has the ability to make each one of his crew members feel like they are integral for him to achieve his dream. And they feel like because of that, like they are also helping him create his dream. So it becomes their dream as well. And it isn't Luffy just pushing a crew hard. So I hate saying this out loud, but I also uh-huh. love saying it out loud. Uh-huh. Luffy and Foxy have a lot more in common. Um, oh my because God. Because when Foxy has his crew, he has a way of making the whole crew feel like they are the best of the best, the coolest of the coolest, and they're all in a lark together. And they are out in the world having absolute fun and just getting into adventure after adventure but each adventure is something worthwhile even when they're being attacked fighting etc and that's the exact same thing for foxy and luffy Mm -hmm. and that they both are such charismatic leaders but not in the way that they're charismatic and getting people to do what they want because they're giving like raw raw death war speeches but in the way that their charisma is infectious and you feel like a better version of yourself when you're with them huh And so for me, yeah, that might have happened to this person because traditional captains are charismatic in the way that they are great leaders and they tell people what to do. But those people don't feel like they have a say in what's going to happen as much as they do on Foxy's ship, which is run with more chaos, and on Luffy's ship, which is run in more chaos. But yet, despite the chaos that's taking place, they still have an overarching purpose that threads them together so that they don't fall off the track. The method of getting to there is going to be chaotic and interesting and adventurous. Everyone is going to be needed to do it. But unfortunately, in my opinion, Luffy and Foxy have a lot in common as leaders. And that's why I don't think that they would have to worry about anything like a crew um, having a mutiny. I I will say, though, what Mori is worry, uh, warning about isn't a mutiny. It's very specifically just not being strong enough and losing your crew. Uh, like he was defeated. His crew was killed by yeah, Kaido. He was defeated, but it. But he also made a thing where he said they'll turn their backs on you. True. So they abandoned him, which is something Luffy's yes. crew wouldn't do. However. Yes. And his I, wouldn't. Something I think is very important to note. And that This is something I started to pick up on on my first viewing. And so did a friend of mine. Uh, so this is first viewing information, which again, I've said is fair. Everyone we've met up to this point has been talking up how big things are to come, especially all of the villains that have been hardest to fight. Lucci hyped it up in talking about you can't fight the whole world, whatever. But the two I want to focus on are Moria and Crocodile. They are people that felt almost untouchable. When Luffy first tried to fight Moria, he couldn't beat him at all. He couldn't get through his defenses and hit him. The only reason we stood a chance at the end was because Moria got impatient and absorbed all the shadows. If he had kept fighting, he probably could have won. And he instead got impatient and was frustrated and lost his cool, which is an edge for us. But both of those two, who were so hard to beat, who each of them handed at least two victories to the Straw Hats, both of them think that to take on the world, they need more. They need super weapons. They need a big threat. They are hyping up how big the real heavy hitters in the world are. And they were handing us our ass I, I think that hype for the, the size of the world to come is so well done in that fact. I agree. But the the thing in there that doesn't make me as nervous as it should is that that has happened to us oh. every time as a crew we go into anything. When we went into the Grand Line, the very first thing we were told is that we wouldn't survive as a crew because yeah. um, the things over there were far too far too scary for us. They were way above our ability. When we first fought Crocodile, he impaled Luffy through the chest and Luffy nearly died um, in a similar position as we have going on with Puma yep. here. Um, so whenever this happens, I just feel like each and every single time this happens and that we get hyped up, it's amazing because he's doing leveling for us. He's showing the leveling ahead of time so that we're able to know how much bigger the next battles are because I think eventually our crew prevails and they learn to use hockey um, to bring themselves up to that level. All righty. 
But I just really like also, how much it uh, makes you up. also miss like it was the same thing with Crocodile. Did you mention Crocodile and his saying that he had to find the Oh yeah, large no, that's weapon. what I meant. He needed to find a, a super weapon to be able to take on the rest of the world, yeah. he felt like. Like he needed to find the fucking Yeah, nukes. exactly. Exactly. But they also um Luffy's a god. So we'll All right, you know what? I guess that does I guess that's the end of that thought. Because Luffy's a god. <laughs> Um, is there anything else we need to touch on before we go to closing segments? Mm, there's so many things, right? Like, there's so it, much I we feel moved quickly. Sad. I feel sad that we couldn't do this like slower. I, because... I think it's fine, but I get that. I am looking forward to in the second half when we get to slow down a bit. Oh, I'm. You told me that the next section that i'm reading no there is something else and i do need to do it and oh. it would be a disservice not to okay let's do it so we're just going to talk um about the very end when we get to see the sadness of brooke and we get to see how yeah. brooke slowly watched his crew die and he turns on the um he he turns on the recorder yeah. and he records his entire crew singing one more song for who laboon and because they said brooke we know that you've eaten the revived fruit you're responsible for bringing this to laboon and the reason that it's so amazing is because not only is it the crew's last thing and they're bringing it to laboon which is unbelievable but it was brooke's idea and Brooke knew that he was going to come back and he didn't know that he was going to first be um, a ghost wandering, looking for his own body. Mm -hmm. And so Brooke needed to help to give the crew purpose in their final moments. He was watching them all die slowly. And part of him for sure was thinking, we need to bring this special thing to Laboon. But part of him was probably also thinking, we need to give the crew something to focus on rather than just their end. And so by recording this song and having everybody sing to Laboon and sing a song that meant so much to Laboon that he would have heard them sing before, but also something that he says is um, something pirates would sing in the good times and the bad, that it is, it is a thing that threads together all your moments as a pirate on the sea. And so when he records it and slowly watches his crew fall over and die, I kept thinking what a gift it was that he made sure that in the last moments, the crew felt like at the very end of their life, they were still fulfilling some greater purpose and they were still doing something worth valuing. And what a gift to give to people at the end of your life. You were in your very last moments before you die. And he gave to them a direction to pour their heart into. So their last thoughts weren't about how they were dying. Their last thoughts were about a life worth lived and the happiness they'd bring to a friend. That's, that's so sad and sweet. And it just made me feel so truly, truly proud of him oh. for giving his crew something to feel love, joy, and purpose as they passed. He also gave them the ability to think about Laboon and what a beautiful, beautiful friendship they all had with him. So at the end of their life, they did something worth doing. He gave them meaning and purpose, and he gave them a happy thought to focus their lives on. There is and an I extra just, hat I more want to see their dream accomplished. Oh, so much. And so I I totally loved that ending. I totally admired um him standing on the deck and saying goodbye to the to his crew that way because he could they all couldn't just stand around and look at each other and talk about how much they enjoyed each other's company. That would never have happened. But this was his way of getting to say goodbye to them too. And he said goodbye. He said, okay, boys, gather around. We're going to sing one last song to Laboon. And it was also a goodbye to each other. They sang a song they sang together all the time. And through music, they said goodbye to each other and their friend. 
extra. The segment ending you sent earlier. So, yeah, that was really, really, I think, one of the most beautiful things mm. in this entire part. It's something it that Celio points out is that um, the deck being clean of bodies when he's walking around he's probably doing this for the thousandth time and it's the scene that leads to Luffy finding him. Oh my God, you're right. They, they, yeah, they cut to a scene of him saying goodbye to the bodies and they show it or, uh, say, and he's on the ship and it's clear in the bodies. All the bodies are gone. Yeah. And he walks up and leans on the deck with his cup of tea. And it's the exact pose he's in when he finds Luffy meaning the exact moment he finally went around saying goodbye and cleaned all the bodies off and seemingly had given up was exactly what the moment Luffy found him. Yeah. Oh my God. You're oh, right. I, I hadn't fully taken in what you were trying to say before, but no, that's, Oh, wow. That's such a subtle detail. And it's so, Oh no, no. What did I misinterpret it? Celia, please explain. Cause like, Okay, what did I what did I get? What did I get wrong? Please, please, I've misinterpreted. No, I think that's a sad thing. Okay. Yeah, but Katu, can you look it up? Because I think I have other predictions oh, around God. that paper too. Like, oh, yeah, man. that one is a mushroom, but I think I had other ones as well. We do have mushrooms for your paper predictions, that's true. Yeah, but I think I had another one where I said something else it could be, and I'm wondering if that one is Oh, yeah. that his song is taken as scary. I'm still saying and that, that the exact the pose with, with the bodies cleared out and that him sitting there when Luffy finds him, I think that's brutal. All right. Okay, uh, so then there's wanted... another part where he's saying goodbye to mm. Captain Yorkie. Oh, and it goes they from leave to happy. Captain. I get it. And they leave Captain Yorkie in a mm -hmm. place like not in his bed somewhere he's still... to, well he's left to go see if he can find a miracle cure for the disease but he's laying in his bed and he's sent off so uh prediction we're definitely going to meet captain yorkie in the future this has been a popular fan theory for since about well, right now where not? you are come on how can we not i'm on team yorkie's coming back i've always been on team yorkie's coming back yeah no we have to they're there's no way where he says here, Captain, I've burned those words into my heart just now. Um, and then he, because he says right before it something else. And then he says, take good care of yourself, Captain. We're parting ways, but this doesn't have to be the end. We'll all reunite again. Okay, Captain? Saybrook, that song I love? Send me off with that song. Ah. And so... And so they sing it as they go away, and then it goes back into Brooke being on the ship all by himself. And then... Look, yeah, he'd be ancient. So is Dr. Correa. They deal with it. He could live. He's alive. Yorkie's yeah. alive. Well, it says here, the rest of the infected and I will try to exit the Grand Line via the comm belt. We're not giving up yet. I'm telling you, we're going to see him again. It doesn't matter if he's ancient. So what? Brooke is a freaking skeleton. Who is he to judge? Um... So another thing that I thought was interesting because those are all beautiful, but you can't, we can't forget. Um, oh, yeah. They keep talking about the sun here too. Interesting. Okay. I'll do that in a minute. We I'm can't forget that. Thoughts Brooke... So that I get it right. Cause I misinterpreted things. Okay. Do you want to say it first? No, no, no. It, it'll, it's not in yet. What did we gloss over? We gloss over a lot. Someone wanted us to talk about Lola cause Lola happened and we didn't get to mention Lola. The, woman running around looking uh asking people to marry her uh that the shadow was taken for for the pig lola yeah the one who ends up becoming friends with nami in the regular life too whose shadow yeah. was there who nami actually gives um money to so we know how much that relationship meant to yep. her and that person gives yeah. her a vivra card of her mom yeah no we have and we have definitely be a shame if somebody deleted your art i'm now at 10.2 oh, um i would I never do, never delete this do. art this is, this is going to be a shirt for me is what this is going to be um yeah, if you guys delete art now you're getting rid of merch <laughs> yeah this is merch this is a shirt for me 
I'm going to wear this in the world. Um, what was I going to say? Lola is amazing and incredible. But... Look, look things- Spiroclastic Flow, I'm not spoiling when we don't know about anything because I will always speak from the perspective, uh, from that perspective is what I've decided. So when I say that's a mystery, I will say that about things that have been solved because I realize that gives it away. But now I can say that even if we know. Even if we know? Uh, read the tale. I don't delete the whole image if someone says delete your art. I delete a significant portion. And it's always been a significant portion. All right, Repetator's done it. Repetator? You've 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 forced my hand. I must it must no, be deleted. Said, oh, did he redeem it? Yep. Let me think about what I'm deleting here, because it's gotta be a significant portion. What am I feeling least certain about? No, he refunded it. <gasps> you can re- you refunded it? Okay. Well it was probably about to be Kuma and I was gonna redo that. <laughs> delete Zoro's nipple. No, it's gonna be it has to be a He's major like, no, section kidding, of artwork. I'm kidding. Don't do it. No, I think this is amazing. Yeah. I think yeah, it's one good. of my favorites. It's ever. been refunded. We're all good. You I didn't know you could refund it. Too. That's crazy. That's incredible. <laughs> Everyone here was like, no. Look, I would make it better the second time. That's always gonna I'm I'm honestly I like this enough that I'm not certain I will, but I will usually succeed at that. I'll try my hardest. <laughs> Um, so I was thinking about this and this is how we end in a more funnier note. Yeah. Um, people have a really easy time forgiving Brooke for being a pervert. And then some people are like, he's not a pervert. He is, he's a pervert. Um, and it's funny because there's a kid in one of my classes who he, he's one of the ones I've talked about. I'm going to quit saying that, but there's a kid in one of my classes Uh and I said to him, he's like, how do you feel about Brooke now? And I said, well, he's still a pervert. Um, people are trying to just make me forgive the fact that he's a pervert and telling me, um, don't, don't take him for being a pervert. And he doesn't mean it this way. And he doesn't mean it that way. And and the kid said, yeah, he does. He's a total perv. I still love him, but he's a total perv. (laughs) I started to laugh because I think it's easier to accept somebody when they just say, yeah, he is. And so here's my thinking on that. I think people don't find him to be perverted and it doesn't bother him. If you think about what he originally looked like when he had flesh on him, if as a fleshed person, he was walking up to people and saying, can I see your panties? And he actually does it with Sanji in here, which is an area that made me really cringe is right with Sanji. He looks over him and he goes, and maybe we can see some of the mermaids panties right to Sanji which makes sense, right? Because Sanji is his other person who would be a pervert with him. And I was like, it's, I don't like it. It's not cool. And as a woman, I've talked to lots of other women who love One Piece and they're like, no, I don't like it either. I think it's gross, but I like Brooke and I have a really hard time around with this. And I said, I think it's really easy for people to forgive Brooke and not see him that way. And no, lots of people say it's because in Japan and Japan is weird. And I've heard all those arguments. It doesn't mean I have to enjoy it. And it doesn't mean that it's necessarily right. Um, And so it was funny because I said, I think the reason that people are so comfortable with it and they can look past it is because he's bones. If he still had flesh on him and he Mm -hmm. walked up to people and said, can I see your panties? People would be so grossed out. And it's because as bones, there's one bone he doesn't have. Uh Uh-huh. And so because he doesn't have that one particular bone now that he has no flesh, I think it's very easy for people to forgive him because he can't go in that direction. And so I think that's why he gets away with it. It's because of all the bones that Brooke is made of, he's missing the most important bone, Jesus and therefore Christ. people can look right past it. And that's my feeling. I don't on think that. you're wrong. I think there is there is an emasculation factor in why people don't take Brooke seriously. Exactly. And so that's why I think that his his yucky perviness is something that people can just be like, well. He's a funny skeleton. 
he doesn't have the equipment to really make this as perverted as you think. <laughs> so, because if he was still flesh and he'd come back to his body and relived and he walked back into a body that was flesh, people wouldn't think it's as funny. But I do agree. Yeah. <laughs> yes, Paladin. Thank you for just putting. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Paladin, for making it very clear what so that we can not dance around it. That's, that's the one we're talking about right there. <laughs> so I think that's what it is, and I think that's why people are able to just forgive his perversion. For me, um, and people also talk about him being clinically insane and blah blah blah. It's still just, it's not, it's not a great joke. It doesn't need to be there. I think that he is just as funny without him asking people to see their panties all the time in my opinion and i don't um and this one here that they said in my opinion people are always using oh it's japan and it's a different culture that's mm -hmm. exactly how i feel about that i just think it's that's not a good way to look at it and so um you got to have your own sense of what's right and wrong. I still, oh, I still am going to enjoy him. That's what's I'm still going to watch him that's and I'm hoping to like him more and more. Are you switching his side for a reason right now? What are no, you doing? I just, I just, something was wrong with Zoro's head and it's just lopsided. That's all. Oh, okay. We got to do some um, surgery. And I don't like it, but it doesn't mean that I'm not going to continue to learn to like Brooke and have good moments with him. I'm just not going to ignore the fact that I think it's inappropriate and I don't like it. I just don't like it as a joke. And then when people say, well, it's just a joke, you, jokes, it's not funny to me. It's just not I a don't, funny joke. I don't don't wanna, get me wrong. I don't want to get into this I, in detail because I think yeah. it would be too distracting. But I think this continues the trend yeah. of at some point we should have some experts on, do some research and do a one piece and gender politics episode because i genuinely yeah. think there's a connection you can make between the emasculation of not taking his perversion seriously and how yeah. trans men are often emasculated and not tr and treated as um victims and et cetera et cetera in public consciousness yeah, yeah i've had a similar thought and and i was gonna say I, I would go in that direction and talk about it more but i think it moves it too far away from here I, but that is exactly why I think I, I, everyone I, says I think it's says, a topic oh, I it's not a big thought. deal, and he's just being funny, and oh, he's crazy, and that's what they do in Japan. And I said, like, yeah, absolutely, I could see people feeling that way because he doesn't have a penis. I think there's and something think to that. Yeah, so I think that's what it is in in my in my thinking about this. I have so many areas that I want to attach to corkboarding to this this whole thing later on. I'm gonna have to spend some time with Kuma. But everybody is telling me that this next oh. arc that I'm about to read is oh. absolutely wild. Wait, wait, is Melon T trans? I don't know anything about Melon T, but if they are, I that is absolutely who I'd love to talk to. I've never watched their content. I don't know anything about them uh, other than that they're a big One Piece YouTuber, but that does sound great because I would love to do that, that episode, but I'd want an like I'd want some more exp uh, expert opinion on it because as much as it's something I'm very interested in, it's not a place I feel comfortable leading a conversation. Not to mention that it should be something okay, that okay. someone They're in that gay. position did. Okay, They're a lesbian. Okay. You know but still. Fascinating here. Hey. There has to be a trans one piece YouTuber, right? Paladin, penis is a way better word than dick. <laughs> <laughs> no, Just apparently she's not trans. I was asking. Oh yeah, yeah. It. it's worth noting. Next oh, arc might be denser the... than Jaya. Yeah, that's true. Did they do the one where um, I see that little um, thumbnail all the time with God, the no, queer people of um, One Piece? And it has like somebody, I think it's number two, doing a pirouette or something. This is still very lopsided. I like the overall composition, but I fucked up. Does anybody know? Um, no? I um, don't know. Yes, yes, these people say that is them. Okay, yeah, because I've seen that particular thumbnail like a million times, Bon Chan and somebody else, and I don't know who the other person is right now, and um, and it says queers. Editor, keep it based. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Is, uh, Celio, if you can enough. cut down the we emasculate Brooke because Brooke doesn't have a dick bit to like a concise portion of it. I think that actually has a great place in the video. I just think we went on a little bit long. 
<laughs> oh, here it's okay. It's just not okay in the video. Um, mm. Dude, we can't just tell Murphy to come on here and hang out with us. We can't. Look, that's up to Murph. They're the, she's the bigger uh, YouTuber. That's how it works. We're just baby tubers. Yeah, we're new. Baby oh, yeah, we should do the plug before we do baby. the... Oh, shite. Thank you, Katu. You know what? God, um, it keeps getting worse. Thing, Honestly, let's just do it like thing this. That you wanted to announce as well. I really... Oh, yes, I do. Hey, everybody. In the not-too-distant future, we're going to be starting a Patreon. I'm going to be trying to start in a new year, which probably means by February, uh, with how I am at the speed of these things. Uh, I'm going to flip it so he looks normal while I'm doing this, but we do need to fix that face. Um... <laughs> The Patreon is going to have a goal. The goal is going to be to have all of its money funneled towards buying the box sets from Mama Drock. So we are going to be buying Mama Drock the box sets as she goes through bit by bit. After that, it'll be reinvested into the channel in different ways. Uh, but that'll be the start of what we're going to be funding with the Patreon. Uh, if you want access to the high res versions of the pictures I've worked on so far, I would recommend you go to the Discord now because once the Patreon started, there will be a patron tier of the Discord that'll get you access to the portfolio channel and there will be a low res portfolio channel that'll be accessible to everybody. So if you want full res images, go now because very, very soon we will not have full res images available for everybody. All right. Uh, we're not done yet. We got to do closing segments, but and, and give the promo, the ad, the ad read, the... We don't do ad reads. What are plug? Jesus Christ, words are hard. You want to do the plug? We have. You want me to plug? I love plugging. I'll be YouTube again. That was fun. I just want to say every. Oh yeah, I do love it when you're YouTube. I want to say when I look at the comments that the people in our, um, in our comment boxes. Yeah, that's right. I said comment and comment. Um, comment boxes. I'm always yeah. amazed at how what a freaking intelligent cool group of humans we have like i love the debate we get into debates all the time in book chat i would really love it if people joined book chat because i can't even tell you how fun it is to go on there and just see like the heavy debating going on and some people will get worried that there's arguments and da 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 but in no it's it's freaking debate and it's glorious because everybody is coming out with their own opinions and they're backing them up and they're listening to other people's ideas and it is everything I could hope for. I just, I freaking love it. I love our book chat. So come and join us in Discord. That's my first plug. Join the fun, join Discord, rock it out. It's an amazing place. Okay. Yeah, time for you to be YouTube. Here. I fucked up the anatomy here. We're going to be fixing this for a little bit. We have Zoro surgery starting. I got to... I don't, I didn't do a warm up, and I gotta remember that when I don't do a warm up, I'm worse and I need to take longer to do my sketch before I get going. All right. You All right. Ready? Do you want you to ready? be YouTube? Can you do it in that case? Yeah, I can do this. I can be YouTube for our close, for our plugs okay. before closing Countdown segments. Countdown. Give us a countdown. Mm hmm. 42. <laughs> that, no, I didn't ask for give us the meaning of life. I asked for a countdown. <laughs> countdown. Countdown. Got this, everybody. Two, you can count down. Seven. Yeah. Four. Thirteen. Two. Thirteen. <laughs> nine. Three. Oh, this is zero. Worse. One. There worse. it is. We made it Yay. worse. We made it worse. Zoro surgery is not done. Hey, Don't worry. I, I said. I said. Hey, YouTube. Oh fuck! I forgot because I was drawing. Hey, hi, hi there. I'm YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> hey, can we have a chat for a little second? Uh, yeah, I'm available for that. What's um, up? Have you been watching this? Yeah. What if I did you like it? Was it good? Uh, you know, I've got a lot of fun. I'm still here, ain't I? Yeah, that's a good point. Okay, well, if you're here and you enjoyed this, would you mind pressing the like button? Because then that shows other people that you liked it, and then people who are like you might also like it. Again, is that how that works? That's how that works. That's that's the exact thing. Like that's, well, that's all exciting. the thing. That's how the thing is. Yeah, no, it's really easy. You have all the power and control. Damn, also, okay. if you like it, press subscribe and hit that bell thing there. The bell tells you every single time we're going to be on. Wait, wait, it tells you every you know time? You silent, YouTube? Yeah, uh, <laughs> was, fixing, was fixing my monitor. It, um, it, it disconnected for a second. <laughs> you know, wait, 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 wait. It'll I'm tell you every time. I'm doing this on my own. 
Every look here, you should. You're, you should. It turns out. It turns out Zoro's face being fucked up is making it worse. I did it well last time, but I fucked up his face so bad. I'm gonna basically be painting it from scratch because I just. It's fucked up. It's fucked up. We're fixing it from scratch. We're taking it from the top, basically. Okay, people. When you're editing this, you could take the all, all the part you. about Druk. No, no, and his no. His 700 no, can... squares dropping f bombs nonstop. Oh my god, Christ. Okay. Okay. Don't worry, you can fix it up in the edits. The bell, if you click the bell, it tells me it'll I'll be informed when you post. Oh my god. Yeah, every single time that we do any kind of new content, you'll actually find out it won't be a guessing game. Oh shit. I thought it had to be a guessing game. I thought that was the rules. No, also then we become best friends. Wait, we get to be best friends? Yeah. How, how do I it's the an embodiment rules for you? How do I, the embodiment of social network, uh, get to be best friends with you, a content creator on no. the social network that don't, I am? Don't think about it too much. It'll hurt all your right. brain. It's all I'll about the I'll try not to hockey. think about it. Hey, you've raised it's the question. The you, you've raised the question and now it's on my mind of, of how that's possible, but I guess I'll do my best to just no, not. No, we're crew. We're crew now and you're happy with it. Okay. I, well, all you right. told me I am, so I must be doesn't make sense all right, that's otherwise. all i have to say to you press all the right. dinger go into the thinger <laughs> press the bell rock it out join us i will now join the discord greg you're not already in the discord discord us uh at fifty thousand, the kid named drock is going to turn into a pineapple he'll that's have a what face that's a pineapple a body that's a pineapple. Should we just? Hair, should we, pineapple. So the actual thing is, I'm going to do cosplay Marco. I'm gonna dye my hair. I'm gonna wear and open his shirt, the purple shirt. Uh, I'm gonna dress like Marco. I'm gonna make myself look like Marco, a, who is called pineapple by some people. I, I, it's I'm not, just not gonna lie. I hope he gets more attractive because his original, where I met him, he was not hot. No, he's in that not hot at all. Marco gets hotter as he goes. Don't worry. <gasps> this person turned into a pineapple. I'm you, pineapple truck. My, it's amazing. Oh my God, Jesus Christ. I guess and you then, have to know about that meme because of school. And then, then, um, when we get to, how many did I say? I, 150? This, that, this one's on you. I am not responsible for your... I, sorry, sorry. Just saw something that got me flustered. Uh, I am not responsible for your subscriber promises no but i said it it was 150 right did i say 150,000? everyone you'll know you're smart you've got oh, this i don't remember it was like 120 or something. marco was, was done specific. dirty early on i'm pretty sure i said 150,000. if we have 150,000 subscribers and you that were like right. what that sounds right that sounds like a lot yeah <laughs> that's what like I it was said. five i think it wasn't five <laughs> <laughs> i think it was two I said 250? My God. Yes, so much. You know what? It's going to happen overnight. One day we're going to be sitting here. I'm going to open it up and it's going to be like, holy crap, we have a million subscribers. Genuinely, I think we need to do a push when the Annie's Lobby goes up on like Monday. Like Mama Drock will cosplay as Robin. <laughs> yeah. I mean, look, right. not, all, not every Robin outfit is skanky. You got like, uh, you got the, uh, you know, the one where she, you know, the, she got the one where she, um, the one, you know, when she, uh, so no, right? <laughs> so that's a no. <laughs> the cowgirl is the best it gets. <laughs> my students come on here and they're like, so yeah, I saw you, uh, like a lot. Oh god, his first anime appearance is actually much worse than the first manga appearance. You are correct. Yeah, no, that's not that's not possible. I'm just gonna put my face out there. Once we have two hundred and fifty thousand subscribers, which I think should be easy peasy, an overnight thing, then I'm overnight gonna come on here yeah. and and show my face. And I think we'll just do a live broadcast with the two of us. I'll draw the pictures because uh God knows I'm an artist. Yeah. It should just be me. You say that, but like, while I am a better artist than you, you have far more natural aptitude than I do. Now, if I you had, if you people. had drawn as much as I have, you would be better than me for sure. I draw stick people and stick people only. That's a lie. That's a <laughs> lie, and you know it. Nope. According to the kids in my school, I will put a bunny Something on the board, and then I'll write above it "bunny" so they know what it is. 
Oh my god, yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> Don't believe this woman. <laughs> hey, that's my shtick, and I'm sticking oh, to it. Oh, people are right, you can dress as um, Alabaster Robin and just do up the coat. Alabaster Robin, you guys and are you just, genius! And if you just button up her coat, it's just a woman in a robe. Oh, I really genius. gotta do warm-ups, I guys. Go Robin. I really but gotta then do I would warm-ups. Be... I would be going as Robin, though, without my own, um, I could draw a chopper. I could draw a chopper in my sleep. Um, but I wouldn't give him the great dimension. Look at this. Moment to see Berserk so she can see Miriam's drawings. Okay. People are talking about that a lot. People like Berserk. Berserk is, no, is from what I understand. You, very... you have seen the cork board, so you have not seen my art. You have seen the way that I want people to see my art. <laughs> <laughs> Mama Draw chooses to draw badly so that there's no expectations. Zero expectations is where I thrive in art. Yeah. I choose to draw as well as I can because I uh I wanna get better. I, I think it's good to push yourself. And, and it's your even thing. if you it's even if you thing. don't have natural aptitude at something, if you enjoy it, there's a glory and a, a really there's a, a satisfying feeling to getting as good as you can get and trying to get better. Just so you know, I've heard people joining in the background on this. I've heard people joining the um, Discord. Oh, the Discord? Let me go take a look. Yeah. It's like oh, in the background. All Hello. Of a we got like fucking 10 people showing up during this. Yeah, that's amazing. I'm super stoked mm. to see you all there. I love the book talk. Also, just so you know ahead, um, do not do not spoil things in the regular chat. There is a room that you can go to. What is it called? Uh, the spoiler quarantine, you need to opt into it uh, by going to the rules and info and about reacting. And people will tell you that too. If you didn't understand what he just said and you're like, what? Um, when you go in there, people will tell you how to do that. And it's really awesome because um, people apparently when I'm done corkboardy, they go in there and they talk about it. We, we like to talk about, about how great her predictions are and everyone loves to be shocked when she says something wrong. Yeah, well... I'm going to say things wrong. People, I have not read the whole thing. I'm yeah. not going to know stuff. It's I, not really I, that shocking. Uh, the next stream will cover the Sabaudi, Sabaudi, Sabi, Sabaudi, the Sabodi, the, the archipelago. <laughs> what the hell was that? Sab Sabaudi, Sabodi, Sabaudi, Sabaudi, Sab. <sighs> It's 24, it's 24 chapters. We're going to be reading from chapter 490 to 513. sa ba -o -d archipelago. But then someone says a different thing. Okay, sa ba -o -d, whatever. The sa ba -o -d archipelago is next time. <laughs> we got to we gotta do our closing segments, though. We haven't done our top five. We haven't done um, uh, where Luffy is on the Luffy tier list, presented by Luffy. I have to tell you guys, I've just had such a great time. I know that I, we couldn't do Thriller Bark enough justice. This needed to be many things and we needed to talk about it forever and a day. But There's it is what it is. video we very much want to get out in January is also a thing. Yeah. Unfortunately. Otherwise, so we it's need probably to rush through, parts. apparently. Yeah. We need to rush through. Otherwise, Luckily, apparently, we would have been able to do this. All of the parts. rest of the arcs are at most like 30 chapters for the rest of, of the first half, I'm pretty sure. So apparently, the next one is quite short, you said. How many chapters? It's 23. So, less so than I can half. go deeply into cork yeah, board. So but, I think my next. But it's similarly dense to Jaya. Shit. Well, everyone can just expect a full cork board. No but, talk about the arc. But imagine, let's just set your expectations just a little bit. Not for quality, because I don't like doing that. Imagine a Jaya where more stuff happened. Like not more reveals oh. about the world, but where the plot moved forward more. Ugh. Yeah. What do you mean no reading ahead? Have we met? Uh, Come on, it's me, to, Mama Drop. This, this is one where maybe you should show. read ahead. Actually, I think you're Come going on. to. I here. Let let me let me let's. Do you want to make a wager? What are you willing to wager? I don't think you could possibly resist reading ahead. Are you serious? No, I think it is impossible for you to not read ahead. Okay, I, what I think you shouldn't. Is my reading? I think you very much shouldn't. Up to five thirteen. But I don't think you are going to be able to. You shouldn't. I'm telling you not people. to. People. People. Mm. Have we met? I'm nothing if not reserved. <laughs> I can just sit back and not read ahead. <laughs> yeah. In uh, my defense, 
I'm so reserved. Yeah. What do you no, mean the corkboard is... will be better if I don't read ahead? Why? Because I'll I'll lie about things. I won't know things. Because there's certain predictions you won't be able to make. If oh, because ahead, I'll know right away. There's predictions you can't make if you read ahead. Oh, okay. Oh, well, you just have to say that. I love. Oh, okay. I that's love... You do love predicting. Yeah. And there are certain I love predictions predicting. that are off the table if you read ahead. That's the big reason. Okay. Yeah, that's okay. fair. I could do that. Okay. Say no more. Okay. We found the good reason. Uh, yeah, yeah. Luckily, from here until the next, halfway point of the series. Next time then, because I was denied my ability to just cork board and cork all the time and cork around because um, this was so freaking long. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm gonna, it is. I'm just going to... I, I'm going to cork is, off in this This is one. great news for you, though, because from here until the halfway point where we're going to restructure it because the arcs get longer and uh, we're going to take a bit of a break because most review series need to take a break at that point. All of the rest of the arcs are at m the longest of them is like, I think, 36 chapters. And that's the longest. Red potato. If Mama doesn't read ahead, I'll give five subs. <laughs> Red potato? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Everybody. How many subs are you betting? How many subs do we get Listen, if if, if I, does anyone else want to put slander. subs on the table? This is slander acting like I need Greg, to read that's ahead. a huge offer. So so we are going to get a what I'm hearing is if people follow their follow their word, if you don't read ahead, we get a mountain of subs is what it looks like happening. Slander. <laughs> people have so little faith in my ability to not read ahead slander it's not slander if it isn't true uh, i mean uh if mama <laughs> drock does read ahead i think this means i'm gonna have to gift a pile of subs to you guys so you know uh i think uh, i think oh i think 20 you, i think 20 on Justin my end feels Kate. fair if mama reads ahead i have to give you 20 subs if you guys are putting subs Ooh. on the table on on the other end oh yep yep yeah, it looks like so this is what it looks cool. like is I'm going to need to buy 20 subs for you guys. Yeah, I do love the pink glow around Luffy, too. Thank you, guys. I think Zoro's you know face what? is less tilted now, which is great. News Let's do for the me. top five. Let's do People the top have five. Christmas things to do. They have a they life. Do. People You're are like done. They're like, I'm a drop. Shut up. I have a life. Yeah. Yeah, we're not supposed to gamble a gamble on this, but this feels fair. This feels like a reasonable gamble. She should give the subs if she reads ahead. Mm, maybe one of us will give subs if she reads ahead for sure. That's what matters. Okay, number one, straight to the top of the charts uh -huh. is Zoro. Hell he just yeah! Did. There's no denying it. The man killed it. You you hard you don't really even need to explain why. Oh wait, before this, do we want to say where Luffy is on the tier list of Luffy? What what rank of Luffy does Thriller Bark have? This is S tier Luffy. This is that fair, honestly. This this Luffy yeah. ate a hundred shadows and punched a giant. Yeah. He yeah, this person S plus plus, not a lie. Yeah, no. This is a, he this is a is... high ranking Luffy. Please don't ever what? I don't have a life. Please don't ever stop reading. Okay, that's cute. <laughs> this is it's but this is a Christmas thing. People are like, oh I God. want to go and be Christmassy with my family. People are also pointing Why out. Why won't that Mama sh shut up? What Orz... did Zoro do? Mama? What did Zoro do? He did nothing. <laughs> it's... Zoro did nothing and it was beautiful. And I cried. <laughs> oh man. There's that's great. I love the bit. I love I the bit so much. You, this is the meme I can play into. <laughs> and I just want to tell you, I am not kidding. When I got to that page where Zoro did nothing, I did cry. I put my little pad down. It's... I sat down and I gave a little cry. And then I picked it back up and I was like, good God, Zoro. You're the man. He's so yeah. cool. It's... Uh, he is so cool. You don't even need to explain. Like, yeah, of course Zoro wins Thriller Bark. It's, it's Brooke's arc, and even for me, I'd put Brooke in second place. Yeah, you know, he's number one in the hot, hot sun. 
So you would put Brook in second place. I would. I would. Brook does a fuck ton here. He's so integral to the plot. His backstory is incredible. He's the emotional drive. He connects us to Laboon. I, I, I might. You know what? I might do if it were me. Is uh, Brook Laboon share a seat? Yeah. You know what? I can Brook Laboon share a seat at number two. I think that's the first time I've outright pitched Laboon. one to you, but like. You yeah. just seem so surprised Don't pitch by Brooke. anymore. People are going to eat you. I won't. You're way too talky. People will be like, shut <laughs> up. <laughs> Tell them I'm a Celia fuck. says, fuck you, Drock. <laughs> JK. They added a JK, but that's great. <laughs> <laughs> Brooke Laboon. Brooke Laboon. Sad up. Um, number three. That is where we're at. Usopp. Usopp. Honestly, it, Usopp, Zoro, and Brook are the f- are the MVPs of this arc. They are incredible, yeah. and it's really hard because observer? it's really hard for me to just keep Usopp there because I also want. I just have a negative personality. Yeah, like this was such. This is exactly what we needed Usopp to have because he needed an, another growth so that we could have him be back in the crew in a good way. And leaning into his own strengths and his own strengths were his own personality. <laughs> it's so negative. Um, number four is a Nami Robin tie. All right. I need you to explain why they're linked because as far as I can see, their only link is they're women. And that doesn't feel like a great reason you, they get to tie. No, they're not linked in a way that they're holding hands and sharing um, uh-huh. moments. Uh-huh. They're linked in a way that they both gave the same amount. Like Robin coming at it, grabbing, growing wings, pulling them in, the fight, et cetera, et cetera, is amazing. But uh-huh. I think people forget that Nami, on the other hand, um, was sexually assaulted yeah. and captured. <laughs> that's that's what she gets as a bonus? No, listen. I, she I know, wakes I know. Up and you what to, you just have to admit how this is framed. Starts, no, she wakes up and immediately starts to fight finds her way to the treasure room, grabs all the different people, yep. figures out what's going on with the shadows, um, is bossing everyone around, getting the food to get to the ship, telling, like, she is, like, sh- the minute that chick wakes up, where she should feel, like, I just can't even, she gets up and immediately gets all her strengths back on and takes over. She's amazing. You're right. And she I... wouldn't even be playing the victim. She was a victim, but yeah, she doesn't yeah. even sit in it for a second. Yeah, but I but I need to but I need to express my concerns because I feel the audience may have the same concerns. What is it? Tell me. I'm a little bit feeling like you're putting her with Robin, so it's harder to to push her off and drop her to a lower position because she's tied to somebody else. No. I think Robin and Nami gave uh-huh. gave equally Just to this plot. In the past, plot. we've kind of had a policy of like characters sharing a spot when they were part of the same plot beats and made each other's character stories better. It's kind of been the Fine. policy in the past. Fine. Uh huh. No, Nami's number four. All right, Nami's number four. I think that's honestly fair. I think Nami is incredible in this arc, and uh, I honestly think a spot above Robin makes sense. Yeah. What if I don't yeah. put Robin on now, though? Yeah. So, so Robin's because. five? Oh, oh, someone else gets be five. Because. I'm so curious. Kuma. That's fair. Kuma's fascinating, and he makes the climax of this arc the way that it is. I just think that Robin should be allowed to hang out with Nami, because she does so much, nice. but... Guys, I get that you want Frankie to be on because he built a cool bridge, but that can't get you. That can't be enough. Is it just me or are people obsessed with that bridge? I I didn't know it was such a thing, but I admit before other people brought it up, I was excited to talk to you about the bridge because I thought the bridge is so funny that he built a bridge so fast he can build it faster than it's falling. It's so dumb. It's such a funny bit, but everyone really loves this bridge. No. I was sitting in my drama class. The stairs, and I said to the stairs. That's like, what Where it are you? Where are you? And I said, uh, "Thriller Bark." And they were like, "Pretty awesome bridge, eh?" And I was like, "Or stairs, eh?" And I was like, "What?" <laughs> I didn't know these were so popular, but look, I, I was like, "Is this a thing?" 
I yeah. like Frankie a lot. He's he's such a great character, but <laughs> I don't think you get top five for building a nice bridge. Hype train, hype train, hype train. Oh, damn, a late game hype train. That's crazy. Thank you, Kisa. I can't read names. We've, we've established this. It's a character trait. You have a character trait. I do. It's name problem. Um, that bridge is amazing, but people are obsessed with the bridge and I'm, I'm i mean i'm here for it i love it when people get obsessed about crap it's um, fun. i think i think i can't wait to find out more about kuma i can't wait to see how he was corrupted but how he just saved luffy's life and you drawing this like luffy would have lived but like he let luffy rejoin himself and be stronger and you drawing it like this and really seeing all the pain um leave luffy's body and all the damage that just to me and how little he is inside of his hand i'm come on you can't tell me this dude wasn't friends with his dad he's supposed to be killing him i am thrilled to see if we get those answers and if you're right this person kuma is the most mysterious one piece character mm -hmm. Mm, so I, we still have the mystery. Here's the thing. I've actually found that for me, the most mysterious One Piece character is a character that we're going to be eating next uh eating? We're gonna be meeting we're next eating, arc. We're there's eating actually a character? There's actually a reason that word was in my mind because the character who for a long time I thought was the most mysterious character was a pink haired woman we're meeting next arc. But that's just my take. That's who I always felt like was the one who I most wanted to know about, who I was most curious about. A pink-haired woman that we're meeting in the next arc. Yeah. I have seen a pink-haired person inside of a bunch of um, thumbnails. I mean, there's a lot of pink-haired people. Does she have a bob? Um, the I'm not telling you, but I will say... Oh my god, Red Dragon, you're not wrong, but also Jesus Christ. Uh, <laughs> uh, <what laughs> Someone is asking what the plans are when we slow down in the second half, and it's just going to be breaking down the arcs into smaller sections so that we can go over them more minutely, because right now we feasibly can do arcs in one video, but in the future when we can't, we might as well be thorough instead. This person said top five characters for them. Do, do they become a member of our crew that fast? Look, a lot of people have top five characters that aren't parts of the crew. My top five only has two crewmates. Yeah, okay. Did you read the recent chapters? Who? Drock? Oh, Drock I have read the recent date. chapter. I'm up to date all the time. Yeah, no. Drock stays up to date. I'm Wait, not. I forgot the fact when I said that. I take it back. I take it back because of the fact people were checking me for a reason. I went into the mind of where I was in Sabayoti. I take it back, to chat. You know what I'm why. You know what's happening. It's easy to be in the past. It's easy to think about Sabayoti and be in the past. Celia, I'm going to ask that this be cut out of the video. <laughs> yeah, you're right, Cat 2. That was originally, and then I would have been able to do so much more. Okay. I got back um, in the mindset of where I was first reading Sabayoti, forgot about recent chapters. That's just funny. Mama, my top five are number one, spoiler, number two, Luffy, number three, spoiler, number four, Zoro, and then Robin. <laughs> Mama hit Drock? Okay. <laughs> Celia, no! It is a major fuck up, but it's very funny. Did somebody do a push up? Uh, did I miss it, or is someone just saying they should? We might have run out of push-ups yeah. that we can buy. Let's look. I don't think there is any push-ups. Oh, think someone did it. Someone did you it. Should. You should. I deserve it right now. <laughs> You're rocking. What did you do? Can I know? Can I back this up and listen One, to it, and then two, get a spoiler three, alert? Four, five. I have 10,400 points now. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Oh, I can't, you can't know because it's a spoiler, but it's bad. Well, I'm afraid that I'm going to have to watch this then. Yeah. This person, uh, no, you shouldn't. No, don't so worry. You sailing, are you saying not to rewatch this when we hang up? Don't rewatch, don't rewatch the VOD.
Just watch the edited YouTube video Celio is going to make us. That's going to be great. <laughs> this this VOD is cursed. Okay. Celio, I don't oh. control the top five. Oh, my top five? Oh, okay. Let me think. I don't control the top five, Celio, but... Celio is, is holding me at gunpoint, saying that it only gets cut if I add Yorkie to my top five. What do you think about this? I feel like Brooke, Laboon, and Yorkie together make sense to put them all together. I, I like Yorkie. I feel like you've read more out of Yorkie than I did, but I think that's fair. <laughs> but I can only control my top five. I can't change Mama's top five. Nobody can change Mama's top five. Oh, in the Brooke five. art. It you is. meant my top five. <gasps> oh. Oh, interesting. For the Christmas card. I can do that. That I can add a quick Yorkie to the Christmas card. What Christmas card? Yeah, the Christmas card art that I did of Brooke. Oh, okay. Oh, you meant the art where Laboon is two dads? Celia, I'm so confused. What art? What art do, do we add? Oh, if you can add in the art to the video. Of course you can. Yeah, no, 100%. If you're talking about... Add, I this thought you were... Person, more, yeah. 100%. This person just said inside of um, the book club, and they would so, said it before, but I didn't see it because it moved too fast, is you'll have to get another cook. I keep when misunderstanding Sandy says it, it's like, scrambly. It's like he holds himself so low on the crew that he believes that all he is is a cook. Mm-hmm. I really like that. Yeah. Aww. You're right. That's very um, sad. Thank you for that. Okay. <laughs> Do we say goodbye? See, Leo, I'm yeah. sorry for repeatedly misunderstanding you. I am dense today. The brain is fried. It is what it is. Okay. Well, uh, thank you guys for watching so much. I think that this was one of my favorite arcs. I wish we could have broken it into two sections because I would have loved to have talked about some of the fights and some of the pieces some more. Oh but my, my God. God, we didn't get to talk about the Ryuma fight even. No, it was such a big arc. There's so much to it. Yeah, let's just quickly say we both loved it. It was great. Uh, we talked about it off. Mm -hmm. Like, I just love this arc. It's, uh, and I it's liked so that it. It felt fun. like such a departure from his regular yeah. arcs. Like it felt like we were going. It really did feel like we changed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, I honestly feel like I would have loved to have divided this into two. But on the other hand, I can't wait for this next one because it sounds like it's short enough that I can absolutely go cork crazy. I am so happy to have done this. I'm look, <laughs> I'm still a little bit embarrassed from the mistake I made. My God. Uh, <laughs> if it makes you feel better, I didn't uh -huh. catch any of it. No, no, no. You literally couldn't is the thing. <laughs> I'm so happy to do this. This is such a blast. I really like how this one turned out, even if I really fucked up Zoro's face and had to do cosmetic surgery for a lot of the ending here. This is one of my favorite pictures of all time. It's great. Thank you. I really like it. I think it's up there for me. I think it's behind the hunter, though, unfortunately. This, I kind of didn't read ahead. I only read ahead in that our boat is sitting, waiting to go into a red line. Mm -hmm. Approaching the red line. The, our ship is ready to sail up another mountain. Guys, thank you so much for being here. This is so much fun. I, God, yeah, next arc is is a wild one because it's so short comparably but just be ready for every single thing that one piece does it will do in 24 chapters yeah that's yeah. crazy it has all of it it has all of the things that you like about one piece Oof. that's gonna it's... be amazing it's gonna be a lot. I'm very, very excited I felt like to see how we Jaya do it. Jaya changed everything. Like it changed everything. This is so very I'm similar. Stoked. A lot of I'm the so questions stoked. a lot of the big broad questions you've been asking that you just put up on your board are gonna be answered. <gasps> yeah. In my little question book? Yeah. Oh my god. Mm-hmm. I can't I can't even wait. It's it's really exciting. All right. Uh, I think we will be meeting next week because that's the 30th, right? I think so. All right. I can do it. Well, 
everybody thank you so much for being here uh we have a bet going where a bunch of people have put subs on the line that they will gift if you don't read ahead and i will have to gift 20 subs if you do read ahead to be fair so there's a lot on the line depends how ginny you are <laughs> i'm not gonna be ginny at all look the next arc there's just predictions you can't make if you read ahead and we like predict people like predictions and i think it's gonna be more fun if you if you can make those predictions yeah so let's find someone to raid everybody somebody share me a channel to raid tell me what they're doing do you doing. have any idea how much flack you take about your raids so much so much here's my promise next year is a different era i'm gonna go all of january without fucking up a single raid just you watch I'm not not now because I, I haven't done the training yet. I'm not prepped, but January, I'm not gonna fuck up a single raid. I won't ignore, be able to sleep if I, just... I can't read it. God damn it! Now I'm terrified. You Gertech Tech is playing see. Lethal Company. Five thirteen. Five thirteen. <laughs> Don't read ahead. People said you Tech last time, so that feels nice. Okay, I got to type it right. Who are we raiding? Apparently, Ugertech. People put <laughs> put bets on me rating successfully. Oh god, that sounds too high stakes. I'll put bets on Mama not reading ahead more than I'll put bets on that. Oh, oh, the little protector falling off my earbud means it's electrocuting me. I'm being shocked. Holy fuck! Ow, it's so bad. Oh god, we're ending at just the right time. This is so bad. I, I need a new. <laughs> I'm gonna need a new uh, a new earbud because this is terrible. Holy shit. <laughs> okay. E even if you read one chapter ahead, I think there's predictions we can't make is the thing. Okay. Let me just make sure I type this right. We're double checking. I'm trusting you. If this doesn't go through, it's Paladin Berserker Jedi's fault, not mine, because they said this person's rating. <laughs> we ready? All right, everybody. Represent us well. <laughs> Anna Ruth's Revenge, you're right. I'm sending you off, it's team. Rude. Just so you know, this person's intended for mature audiences. I haven't put that on, but we curse all the time. <laughs> Merry <laughs> Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to one and a Kwanzaa to all. Happy Kwanzaa, Hanukkah. <laughs> and you until will. next time, it's been lovely drawking to you. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking earbuds zapping me. <laughs> you need new earbuds, man. I do. We just raided a person who had 19 people in his room. I think it's a friend of uh, Paladin Berserker Jedi. They've been recommending it. He went from 19 people. And now everyone's going raid, 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 raid. The one piece is real. All right. I'm going to head out. Thank, thank you so much for doing this still. Let's stop. Let's stop our little... Guy. I just wrote a huge moment. <laughs> oh, our little emotes are flashing up on screen for them. Okay. That's awesome. I gotta go. I love you. I love you too. Talk to you soon. Don't forget to turn off Craigbot. Oh, yeah. I just... Oh, I already did. Never mind. Haha. <laughs> All right. Bye. Bye.
course, as a legendary Pokemon, it has a slow growth rate, but I don't <laughs> think that's going to hold it back. 